mostly Databricks side, right? So this is an opportunity to work on the Databricks side and it is kind of, yeah, the content is deep enough to understand and go deep into the concepts because this is what we work in the real time as well. It is not just that we are working on that. Uh, I can just give you some, some, some examples. Like let's say uh, there's a company called Com, uh, Com, uh, Comtex. Uh, I don't know, not sure, not sure how many knows about it. Uh, so this company has a huge requirement that uh, they want to uh, read three million records per second, so which is which is kind of logically impossible with S3 systems or let's say blob storage or anything else. So they were able to handle this through uh, the Delta Lake Delta. So so this this uh, Databricks Delta is helping them in doing that because the throughput is very high and latency is very less here. And we have a schema a schematized approach here, so we can define your schema and work start working on it. Right? So that makes your uh, that makes the life easier for the compact. Where 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 what happened is the blob or S3 has a default storage uh, kind of the, the records. Per okay, yeah. So the records per second maximum is about 3,500 records per second. So the data is almost, they won't have it real time, but uh, they have the, the limit of S3 as uh, 3,500 records per second. So logically it is impossible to handle them. So they went in parallel mode, which means that whenever 3,500 records filled up in this, in, this, in this bracket of S3 bucket, they go to another parallel bucket. So they create these parallel buckets in parallel. And they used to load this data, and then from there they used to move it into aggregated layers. So this is what they tried it, but it is very complicated because the kind of kind of consistency or let's say the validation, everything is kind of going for toss. So they make sure that now they go with the Databricks Delta. That's a early stage for them. So they tried it, and they're able to achieve now around 10 million records per second easily. So that's the beauty of this. Okay. So I would say Databricks Delta is the one which is kind of going to have a huge impact on our uh, processing power and everything. So that's a higher note of what uh, we have seen in the last week, right? So uh, today and tomorrow, I guess let, let, let me start it. It is already 9.3 for us. Uh, so we'll start it. Uh, and today's session would be concentrating on Cosmos DB. Uh, and then we'll go with the end-to-end -end use case. So uh, in this process, uh, so tomorrow we'll see the end-to-end -end process, but we'll try to touch base the topics which are required for tomorrow. Like let's say the uh, the machine learning modeling inside your uh, data analytics. So as we have, as I mentioned you right, uh, going forward there's no specific ML team anymore. It's all automated. You just need to utilize the power. That's it. So in this process, in this process of kind of embracing the uh, culture of big data systems as well as a AI modeling. So it's very important that as we are developers or architects or leads, we should know how do we take this model which is given by data scientist and map it to your solutions, right? This is very important because they will not do it. Data scientists cannot do that because they are more concentrating on feature engineering and model extractions and, and optimizing the models. So their level of expertise lies there, but how do we integrate to your application? How do you kind of take the right models from the list of models is very, very important for us. So we'll see that concept also because that is defaultedly required for every data engineer to work going forward. Okay, so it's not about machine learning. We are trying to see the model which is generated by machine learning model and how do we organize this into Docker containers and uh, how do you expose it into the version controls and everything. So it's more about ML ops, which is again, again, to be embraced inside your data engineering. It is no more the different entity or DevOps team who's doing it. It should be done by big data engineers mostly. Because I'm personally doing it, that, that space. Okay, so these two things today we today we'll concentrate mostly on the Cosmos DB. And I, how many are uh, very new to Cosmos DB here? No. How about this? It seems to be new. I guess last time we, when we discussed that a lot of people came, came, came out saying that they're very new to this. Uh, so yeah, I guess I could see people saying new. Uh, so 
So let's let's go and have uh, an understanding. So we'll try to today we'll try to concentrate on CosmoDB. How does it work and what is the important things? So as as again the the point is that we are trying to concentrate on uh, kind of level 400 level. I cannot go into the basic part, but I'll try to touch base the basics as well as the deeper concept of optimizations or let's say even how do you reduce your are you uh, costing because uh, cost positive is too costly. Costly sense kind of. Uh, the way it has been leveraged or used is different way and uh, how do we reduce the cost of it is very very important through optimization approaches so we'll see those things today because it's all level 400 so i have to concentrate those things also and second and and then the last thing is uh, if time permits for us we'll go with ml ops i'll text i'll touch base what is it and why should we require it and how do we solve it and tomorrow we'll have an entire example from from scratch so tomorrow 90 percent of the day uh, we'll be spending only on uh, uh, only on hands on that's it there's nothing else okay uh, so that's the uh, important note to consider here today we'll have around 60% is hands on remaining 40% is more about uh, theory because uh, everything is due to cosmos db and, and ml ops also so let's go with it and anyone worked on ml ops a kind of uh, the machine Azure machine learning services not a studio anyone worked on uh, ml services Okay, seems to be no. That's fine. So let me share my screen and start working. We'll start working on it. Hope everyone is able to see my screen, right? Okay. So uh, as I mentioned to you, the Cosmos DB is fully managed globally distributed database system, uh, which is kind of guaranteed to have a built-in uh, guaranteed low, low latency as, the, as well as extremely scalable uh, solutions for modern apps, which means that, please. Can you mute everyone, please? Yeah, yeah, please. Thank you. So, uh, it is uh, basically mentioned to have extremely low latency, which means that the uh, kind of the access for this, for the information, whatever it is, it is kind of very, very fast. And the throughput is very high. Mayuri, can you be on mute, please? Okay. So uh, the other very important thing is, okay, let me just, before going into kind of introduce you this about, this is all about NoSQL. Kind of uh, what it means is basically when you're working with modern apps or let's say any any kind of any web applications or let's say any integration services. So generally we go with Cosmos DB there. Like example is Amazon, right? Amazon uh, Amazon or example let's say Flipkart. So they generally tend to have a Cosmos DB as a medium. I'm sorry, I guess some. Mayuri, please can you be on mute, please? So uh, the very important thing about uh, Cosmos DB is it is a, a kind of a layer of wrapper on top on top of your uh, all the NoSQL DBs. Like let's say it can be Graph DBs, it can be your uh, Cassandra, it can be your uh, Document DBs, or your tables table APIs. So there are a lot of lot of uh, DBs, right? So so kind of it is basically kind of sitting on top of this. So it is giving a kind of giving a single layer which can which can which can do all these things, right? So, and again, the very important thing is for all these things, the most important thing is to go with turnkey globalizations, or let's say elastic scalabilities, or you should have a guaranteed low latency of 99, uh, five, five uh, percentage, well-defined consistency model, and high level of SLAs. We'll see all those things going forward. Okay, and again, to pro after providing all these things, it is also providing you all these options to consider, which means that if you want to go with key value pair uh, DB, can use this. If you want to go with columnar DB, you can go with this. If you want to go with document DB, this is the way. If you want to go with graph DB, you can go with this. So there are multiple options it is providing you, and it's up to you how do you want to leverage it. Okay. So on top of this, again, it is providing APIs. Let's say you want to use key value, right? You call an API of table API, it will work for you. If you want to use columnar DB, you have to use Cassandra API or SQL API, or it's all basically APIs. And then just it'll, it'll map to your corresponding entities, data models, right? If it is Cosmos, right? 
Cosmos DB or uh, sorry, it is, it is Mongo DB or Document DB. It basically maps it with your document data model. And for the Gremlin, it maps with Graph DB, Graph DB data models. If it's Cassandra, it maps with columnar DBs, right? If it is stable API, it maps with your key value uh, APIs. So basically, what you're understanding here is that you're trying to map whatever the technology or whatever the DB you want to use it in a single umbrella, right? But one very important point is. You can create only one API on top of this. You cannot give all these options here. You can create only one. It can be SQL API or Cassandra or any one of the things. It will not, not have multiple things in one place. So one more important point is, uh, whenever you're going with any of these options, right, I recommend to go with SQL because you can write a SQL query on top of it. It's very easy for you to understand. Right. We'll see that. We'll see going forward. We'll see the importance of Cosmos DB and everything. But in a higher note, uh, I can give you an example. Let's say you remember that the big billion day, right? So whenever we have big billion day, the scalability should be increased drastically. We'll see those examples, like kind of how do we uh, kind of increase the throughput? How do you reduce it? How do you geoduplicate it? So we can do all these options based upon your requirement. Let's say your company is located in UK, Australia, and in in Hong Kong, let's say. So you can define your geo replications define accordingly. Like let's say that I want to have this in these places. Or you observe that your customers are more, more intending to go, kind of go to European regions, you can even enable there so that your customers do not have any latencies there. So this is the way we can easily scale up. And let's say you're trying to start a company, start extending your business into some other location. Directly go there and enable the location there, it automatically have the replications of your data there also. It'll be very fast to retrieve it. So that's the beauty of this, uh, where we'll go have an, have an understanding on this. As I mentioned, it is globally distributed, massively scalable, and multimodal. This is all multimodal, right? OK, so this is more about uh, the higher level of Cosmos DB. Any questions, anyone here? Yes, people are joining now. OK, seems to be no. Okay, so let's go forward and uh, we'll see the overview and value of position of this. Okay, one second. I'm just checking out here. Yeah, sorry. So uh, the first point, what we understood is elastically scalable and throughput, right? So it can scale up to uh, scale up from your 10 millisecond, 10 seconds, or uh, kind of uh, it can kind of have it can have so millions of 10 millions of records per second to hundreds of millions of seconds requests per second. So which just means that like kind of you can easily scale up your limits. So general like general tendency of Flipkart or let's like Amazon is to go from uh, maybe maybe around uh, 10,000 uh, requests per second maybe. But on a big billion day or let's say any, any kind of any huge offers day or let's say any kind of Thanksgiving day, the, the, the limit is going to extend itself to a kind of 10 million records or let's say 15 million requests per second, right? So you can do that automatically. We can just go there and enable that. It will automatically scale up. So the throughput is very high and uh, the highest throughput as you can see is 10, 10, 100 million records per second. That is very huge, right? So, and again, this is all pay-as-you-go model, which means that uh, you have to pay for your uh, throughputs as well as your storage. So, how much storage you want to do it, and how much throughput you want to use it. Generally, you go with the little storage amounts, but when you go on to go with the yeah, huge storage amount, you have to pay for it accordingly. Okay. Sorry. So, other one is guaranteed low latency so it basically provides users around the world with fastest access to data like and it can be less than 10 milliseconds that the guarantee they're giving it for read and write operations which is kind of very very less so it is less than 10 milliseconds for read and write operations anywhere in the world wherever they have defined it as i mentioned you right the most important thing is they they define the uh, locations let's saying that my con my company is located in in us maybe in central us or it can be in Canada, 
it can be in uh, Hong Kong, or it can be in Australia. So, so you can define that location there, and automatically the kind of latency is uh, located accordingly, which means that you have a data replication in all these locations. Kind of, it will be very easy to re retrieve the data faster. Okay. And turnkey globalization. This is again very important. Uh, so, we put your data where the users are in minutes. So, basically, it is available in all the regions. Uh, like, let's say, whatever the region generally we have it, maybe around 53, 60 locations we have it as of now for Cosmos DV. So, the people who are staying there, example I would give is let's say I'm working in a banking company and uh, the requirement is that my customers are more tending to go towards European regions as well as UK regions. So now I want to make sure that whenever some my customer has some fraudulent transaction somewhere, he found that, that there's a fraudulent transaction happening out from some other region, immediately that, that transaction pattern should be updated or mapped to all other regions. right? So we'll make sure to do, we can do that through your uh, global global distribution, as well as any then any manual or automatic failovers can be handled with this global turnkey. Whenever something happens out, it automatically it enables the secondary ones. Which means that let's say we have three uh, data centers, kind of three locations as as a primary locations. We can define what the first one to map with, second one to map with, third one to map with, and whenever some first one fails out, immediately it'll map to second one. So that, that kind of um, automatic failure is handled here. And we can even manually define, like let's say that uh, my primary uh, kind of region is this region. We can manually define it. And automatic synchronization of multi-region replication is auto automatically done whenever something, some, some data set replicates, it automatically replicates all over the locations. Okay. So this is also a kind of uh, better thing to use it, and it'll reduce your latency because it is available all over the data, data centers. Okay, so uh, I guess this, you know, it uh, five well defined consistency model based upon your requirement can define your data kind of strong or eventual can define this. And the most important thing is about the multiple data models and APIs. So, uh, so in order to understand this concept, so you can define your model that fits your requirement. Basically, it means that based upon your business needs, you can define the models. So some people want to go with Cassandra kind of columnar DBs, or someone wants to go with MongoDBs, some go, wants to go with table APIs or Gremlin APIs. So it's up to them. They can define their, according to the, their requirements, they can, they can define their medium, and they should be able to work on it. Okay, so uh, you can use key values, columnar, graph, and document DBs. I have seen one company working on columnar DB where they are ingesting data, whatever data comes it from, uh, from, I guess if someone is from Bangalore, or Bangalore or kind of from Dubai, they, uh, their water board is completely mapped with columnar DBs. So which, which I was kind of, kind of personally trying to involve in that now, where, uh, where the requirement is, the data is coming out uh, from IoT devices, and they wanted to store it into a reporting layer because they want to have a real-time reporting. So, so recently they went with PostgreSQL, but they're not able to handle the uh, kind of multi-thread processing there. So they want to again go with columnar DB now, and they are trying to invest on this approach of columnar DBs. So they're trying to have data registered into columnar DB, and then directly from there they want to build the reports. So that's the approach they are taking it up. Any questions here, anyone? I'll just wait for a minute for the questions. I'll just see the chat window. Okay, so I don't see any examples here. Shashank, no question. Yes, yes Akshay. Uh, so, Shashank, uh, the underlying uh, storage I understand is. Uh, uh, document DB with a JSON kind of documents, mm -hmm. and uh, the layer which is shown is uh, the API layer. Yes. Will it uh, greatly, uh, you know, change the performance uh, between uh, each of the API? Like the example you gave was uh, initially one company they were using some Postgres, and now they are going with this uh, columnar DB. Columnar DB kind of approach. 
yes. so uh, in in case of cassandra actually uh, sorry in case of cosmos db actually i wanted to understand like since underlying storage is a document store yes so, uh, will it greatly differ in performance if we you know choose any of the api uh, so yeah a kind of very good point to answer is first thing is yeah cosmos db has got throughput in higher level right a kind of and so it's more about real time reporting as well as more about more about fitting into the system right so they have their data coming out from iot devices kind of again a json formatted okay so they they can easily fit into the system now they can easily fit into the columnar db directly uh, because uh, and the system the engine they called as Bo, a kind of uh, i don't know if you, if you know about the company called bird on cloud b i r d bird on cloud so this com this kind of uh, this company has an ingestion layer completely which is built on cosmo kind of on columnar db and from there they are trying to map it to your uh, machine learning modeling automatically and from there they are trying to build your reporting layers so this this whole system is all in one place so now they are trying to leverage this opportunity of of columnar db uh, so which can ingest this data, the auto data coming out from the from the input systems and and kind of have it in the system. Now, now the pro point is they have they should have it high throughput because the data can come out every millisecond. So even the Ganga water project, what what uh, what this company is doing out is also the same thing. So they they need to get the the kind of the water levels or let's say the the kind of the level of chemicals involved in it. So they want to retrieve all this information uh, kind of every every half second or every half a minute. So, so that is very difficult for them to push this data into the system because it'll, the, the the throughput should be very high there. So for that, they're going with uh, the Cassandra approach. So the throughput is very much high there. So we don't need to worry about it. Second point is more about replication, right? So because this data can be uh, kind of scalable to any locations now. So all over India, we can access this data. So this is the intention of going with it. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, continuing on that question, actually, see, uh, throughput is uh, being achieved uh, through the um, RU settings. Yes. Uh, so, and uh, the end user is charged based on the RU. RUs. Yes. And considering that underlying storage is a generic one, and there are then specialized API on top of that. Actually, uh, we are sort of uh, buying the uh, throughput, and it is not an inherent characteristic of the service itself. Uh, means, can you give an example? I didn't get the last point. For, for example, uh, there are specialized uh, databases uh, which mm -hmm. will be designed in such a way that they are uh, only for that is, throughput is higher. Yeah. So here, what we what is being done is the underlying storage is a generic one, and then there are uh, APIs on top. And to achieve the desired performance of, let's say, take an example of uh, Cassandra, which could be used for a time series database. Right. And uh, if I compare the performance with, say, similar Influx, Influx right. Influx DB is a specialized time series database. Yes. And in case of Cosmos, actually, for the same throughput, yeah, uh, I have to pay high because it is not a specialized uh, implementation. Mm -hmm. No, but but uh, see, uh, if you want to have a geo replication, uh, kind of let's say the kind of approach what we thought, right? Uh, let's say if something happens, or it should be immediately replicated everywhere. So can that be possible in Flux? Uh, Influx provides cloud offering, so I I believe there is a possibility to synchronize and make clusters and so on. Okay. So, so uh, because I'm not uh, pretty sure on the Influx side, but what I know is a kind of even uh, I guess there's a company called Avendra. I'm not sure how many knows about its company, but they are they they're having merger from. So basically, this company is more into supply chain management of. Uh, the kind of top tech um, top tech hotels. So let's say we we have this uh, Novotel or let's say any kind of uh, Obrai or anything else. So Taj, this kind of come this kind of uh, hotels they serve the uh, needs. So let's say kind of this they serve the food, they serve the kind of whatever needed for their infrastructure, kind of whatever the 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 need for daily needs. They serve this purpose, but they are they are going through third party entities. They 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 had the, the name is 
they name, but they do they do the kind of they do the quality checks, and they process this through the company. So now uh, the point is they are merging with some other company which is located again globally in some other locations. So it's easy for them to have the same layer, right? Because uh, this Avendra and let's say uh, Aramark is a other company. So they two are kind of merging it out, and now this process is kind of taking a lot of time. So they are trying to go with uh, kind of Cosmos DB approach now. They are trying to use Databricks, and from there they are trying to do transformations, and then they are dumping it into your uh, Cosmos DB system. Again, so now it will be globally available now, right? You can easily uh, scale up immediately. So if this kind of thing scenario, so again, I would say, yeah, what I said is right, and it can be scenario based. Because we have only specific requirement, let's say, kind of you want to go with only with cost kind of Cassandra or something else, so then it might help you out. But the other point is that more about using the SQL API also, because you're right, you can write, instead of writing all these things, you can write directly SQL API to work with it. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. So, for any other questions, anyone? Sridham? Sriman? You can mute mute yeah, Thank you. Okay, so uh, that's a higher note of what uh, what it can do, right? And so the very important thing is it doesn't have any schema nor indexing is required. It will auto index by itself. What it, what it means we'll see that going forward. Okay, it synchronizes its auto indexing uh, frequently and it will do by itself. And and kind of we don't have any specific schema, but how does it work? We'll see that. We don't have any schema. We don't have any indexing. Kind of it is done automatically. But how does this really work? We'll see that. But before going to this concept of indexing and all these things, let me just go forward and let me show you how does it work in uh, implementing this. So we'll go to something called as Microsoft Lana. I guess everyone is new to this. So I would say just go. To, everyone go to your portal dot. So your uh, uh, when the Microsoft Learn in Google. Microsoft Learn. Okay, you'll find the first one, Microsoft Learn, Microsoft Docs. Click on this. Okay, so just say uh, hands on and browse all. But before going there, I would, okay, just kind of hold off everyone. You'll just see this landing page here, like this. Okay, let's see, like this landing page. So you just can click on this sign in here option, find sign in option here. Let me sign out. One second, I'll sign it out here. Yeah, now it looks like this, but you find a sign in button here. Click on this, and everyone can sign in with their Outlook accounts. If you have an Outlook account, it's good, or a live account or a Hotmail account. Nothing will work. So let me know if you're able to sign in. I'll wait for a minute. I'm opening the chat window. If any questions, I'll help you out. Some, I would say, everyone can uh, can first of all clear a cache and then start with working on it because some might may not be able to kind of open the sand, sandboxes. This concept called a sandbox. I'll tell you that. And uh, there's an intention why why we are going with Microsoft Learn. There's an intention for it, but I'll tell you that those things also. Okay. So I would say just try to uh, log in with your credentials. If you don't have Ankit, you can just create one account. Maybe it will not take more than two to three minutes. Just create one account on your name, and you should be able to log in with that. Just try it out. Maybe, maybe can, it can be a little faster to do it. I'll wait for uh, two minutes. If anyone is done, let me know.
Hello. Uh, hope everyone is done with this, right? So today we can start creating it. I'll just go forward. Sorry, Kumar, I mean, no. Okay. So you can create this, and you should be able to see your name here. Like how you see, maybe I added an image, but you can just see your name here, right? And this is the landing page of Microsoft Learn. This is very, very important because uh, whatever you want to learn, the Microsoft is kind of going in a different way and helping you out uh, in, this, in terms of giving you a learning path to learn from basic level to advanced levels. Or you are specifically you want to try something. Let's say you want to work with Databricks uh, with machine learning. This is a different case for it, right? It's a different way of using it. So they have given you specific, specific hands-on for it. Go and leverage this opportunity, OK? So I would say let's let's go and click on this hands-on if someone is done with it. Click on this hands-on. Click on this browse all. And you'll be able to see this landing page here, like kind of browse all, where you have products, product specific uh, entities, or let's say role specific uh, courses or level specific courses, type specific courses, so you can define them. So as of now, let me just go with Databricks, right? Or let's say, let me go with uh, machine learning. Let's say machine learning. Uh, yeah. Shashank, uh, just wanted to know where is this browser option? Okay, so basically, uh, let me just go back, sorry. So you're able to log in till the here, right? You're able to see this, this yes. space. And you're able to log in here. Yes, yes. Okay, now just click on this browse all here. You'll be able to see everything here. Browse all. Just, okay, you're okay. So you're not able to see because yes, you have to click on hands on here. Where? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Hands on learning. Okay. Yeah, hands on and browse browse all. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So hope everyone is able to do it, right? Uh, any questions? Anyone here? Let me just check the chat window. No. Okay. So. <laughs> Someone else, any questions, Kumar? Lot of echo. Kumar, can you be on your place? Okay, you can chat, uh, Kumar. There's some, some echo coming out from you. Lot of echo. Uh, so, what I'm trying to do here is let's say I want to go with machine learning. I'm just giving you a random example because everyone is new to this, so I'm just trying to give you an example on this. And I'll say learning path. Now it'll give me the courses saying that how can you learn uh, machine learning with all these options. Let's say you want to work with DSVMs, Dressing Virtual Machines. You want to work with uh, Machine Learning Studio. You want to learn Microsoft, uh, Microsoft oh, sorry, the Machine Learning with Python and Notebooks. Or you want to go with uh, kind of any machine learning services, inbuilt services, or any deployment models. You can just give this options here. Okay, same way, let's say you want to go with something else. Let me just go with, let's say, Databricks, right? I would say Databricks. So now see this here, it is giving me learning paths. It took me, it takes me around seven hours to learn this, but you will be done with the expertise level. This is what we tried it in the last session, right? I guess if someone remembers, I copied a link from something else. So we, we couldn't go much into the deeper concept because we have a limited time and everyone is new to this. So I just tried to introduce you, but if you want to leverage this, learn this, we already have community edition, we already have the links with us, and we even have this if you want to go into deeper level. Like let's say you want to do some ETL operations without using the data factory. Because your team is working on the streaming data, so you want to work with uh, ETL jobs. So even instead of having the event hub, stream analytics, everything, you can have one entity that is Databricks, and you can de define your ETL process as well as your streaming process inside the same place. Or you want to do your machine learning with Databricks, you can do this here, right? So this is a place where, and again, the, the point why I'm putting out this is, if you have observed this, this is a sandbox model, which means that, let me just show you that. I'll just click on this Cosmos DB, right? It is showing me a learning path here, okay? Work with NoSQL on Azure Cosmos DB. Click on this, go down. So it will tell you how do you create an account? How do you uh, kind of define your which API to use at what time? And it will tell you how do you query and insert the data. It will show you how do you work with graph DBs. It'll tell you how do you work with uh, table DBs. So it'll tell you how do you create an app and then expose it to your Cosmos DB, the Visual Studio Code. 
So he'll tell you how to optimize it. There are a lot many inside this. How to it early. This is all not a kind of one-time process. It goes through. Uh, it goes through step by step. It'll explain you everything in sequential order, saying that this is what uh, we have to do it in the steps. Once you complete it, it'll define. Now, now you might ask me about how do you uh, how do I create this, right? How do I create my account? Because it is not given freely. Maybe after today's and end of the day, we will not have this, right? So then, how do I work on it? The answer is. This is providing you even the sandboxes also, which means that it help you to create this portal or let's say the access on the fly. Let me show you that. Just go here. Uh, I'm just giving you some small example. Anyways, I'll go to this concepts later on. So see here, it is saying activate sandbox. When you say activate sandbox, it'll create on your name, right? Whatever the name you created here, it creates an account for you. When I say portal.azure.com with my account credentials, whatever account I created here. That is nothing but Outlook.com, right? It will give me around four hours of access here. So in this four hours, you can create anything inside the Cosmos DB. So you can only create a Cosmos DB, but whatever you want to do it, you can do it there. After completing that, you can't, it will be lost. Again, create a new one. Again, use it. This is a process of using, utilizing it, right? And every time you complete it, it will give you an uh, kind of the XPs, nothing but extra points. This will give you a global level understanding of, of where you are and what is the highest level we have it. Okay, so uh, so that that's the intention of this, and this is going forward. This will help everyone, every organization to work accordingly and help them out in a better way. So now, what we're going to do today is we'll try to use this leverage the sandbox because let's say in future you want to work with Cosmos DB or SQL Server or anything else, we have the options here. We have we can create sandboxes, but database we don't have it, so we went with Community edition there. Right? Okay. Hope everyone is clear till this point. Any questions? Okay, fine. So uh, I'll just go here. I logged in with my credentials and I'll say activate sandbox. It takes around two minutes to activate it. It will verify the permissions and create my sandbox inside my Outlook account. So hope if you can observe this now, we have three hours, 59 minutes, which means that we have access to this Cosmos DB account for around four hours. So how do you find it out? Just go to your portal.azure.com. I hope everyone is able to do it, right? Anyone, any questions, let me know now itself. Hope everyone is able to create this sandbox activated, and this is what we got it, right? If anyone didn't get it, let me know. So I log in with my credentials here. Say yes. Okay. Now uh, the point is just go to resource group here. See this, you know resource groups, right? We have here resource groups. And see here, it is automatically created for you on the name of uh, Kind of some sub subscription here and with the name of the resource group is automatically created here and it is in south central us click on this you find it empty here this is the kind of command prompt is creating created internally to remove it off after four hours or something so this, is, this will do this will have its own content here but it's all empty right here which means that we don't have anything inside this now let's go and create whatever it is mentioned here so what we'll do to now is okay let me just confirm everyone able to create it right anyone any issues let me know now okay so uh, we'll, we'll do it in parallel like kind of we'll try to create a cosmos db account in the portal where we go Hi, here uh, create yes yeah uh, so sorry to interrupt from which uh, when i search for cosmos db i got nine options so which one to select among this you're saying about creating right 
Yeah, so in like Microsoft portal, we I yeah. typed in Cosmos DB. So just say create resource. Oh, okay, okay. You're saying about learning path, right? Yeah. Okay, let me just go there and show you that. See, uh, yeah. let me just show you that there. So there's something called as work with NoSQL. Okay, or else if you just go there, right? Let me just kind of go with scratch. Just say learning path here. Enable learning path and then search for Cosmos. Okay. Now you find only one there. Basically, that is, those are all nothing but inside this only. Inside this only, we have everything. Each module is mapped to your uh, module path. If you just give a learning path, it'll give you all at one, one place. Okay, so you'll find this here. Anyone else who's lagging behind, let me know. So this is hands-on required for everyone. So I'll go and create this. Let me just go one by one. I'll just go and create my Cosmos DB account. I'll just go to say create databases, Cosmos DB, and we have multiple options here. I'll go with South Central US because my resource group is also mapped with the same name. And uh, so see here, it'll give it'll ask me for API. So I have to define the API by default. So we'll see about uh, when to define what, but I would, in a higher note, what I would suggest everyone is, let's say you're working from scratch. You're building some solution from our app from scratch. I would say better go with by default with SQL. But if you're migrating your maybe on-premise systems, on-premise NoSQL DB to on cloud, then I would recommend to go with uh, the whatever the API you're using it already. Okay, which means that uh, let's say I have, as of now, if you observe it, I have multiple options here, right? Let me just show you that. I have my uh, kind of Gremlin and multiple data table API, MongoDB, Cassandra, right? So these are nothing but APIs. So uh, that's okay, Kumar. I'll, I'll hold off. I'm trying to uh, get the concept so you can go back and try to solve that. Okay. So now I can define my model saying that I want to use SQL API or Cassandra API or MongoDB API. So it's up to us what you wanted to leverage it. But before leveraging it, let's make the static thing saying that whenever it is a new scratch model you are trying to build it, then go with by default SQL because SQL is very easy to work on and it will even convert the language accordingly to your JSON formats. You don't need to worry about it. But if you, if you already have your on-premise system, you want to move to Cosmos DB, you want to migrate it, then we can go with the same existing APIs only. Like if it is kind of columnar DB, go with Cassandra API. If it is Graph DB, go with Gremlin APIs. So you can accordingly define it, okay? Let's, let's see the remaining things. And again, just make sure that you disable this geo redundancy, okay? And anyways, we will enable the multi-region rights. I'll tell you this concept later on. Okay, so we'll even try this also. It looks like this. But you disabling this, enabling this, and say create. Let's go and do it. I'll say create new resource. Maybe I'll hold off. I guess Kumar, you are done with done right. Shall I move ahead? Yeah, one yeah. question. So when I am yes. searching Cosmos DB, I am getting 10 results, but I saw you were getting only one result. Yes, because I I have enabled something called as, there if you see in, in your in your uh, left side, right, we have an option called filter and types as learning path, learning path. Oh, you have done only learning path? Yes, because it's all part of learning path. Okay. All those options are part of learning path. I'm just trying to take the higher hierarchy here. Oh, sure. Okay, so I'll go to databases and I'll see this this Cosmos DB defined here. Okay? So I'll go to uh, databases, Cosmos DB, so click on this. So, and again, there's one more option they're giving it, like try Cosmos DB for free, up to 20K RUs or 30 days of unlimited re renewals. So this is again a very good thing to try it out and you can try to leverage the importance of it going forward. But I would say don't use it right away because we are very new to this. Everyone is new to this. So I don't want to kind of invest more time on this space. And you, you lose your uh, account session, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah. Actually, I just wanted to know first, uh, after logging into the portal of Azure, then uh, what do we need to create first? Okay, so you're Resource able to see this one, right? Uh, Maxwell Learn a Sandbox. 
they able to see this ah uh, one minute no actually i can see the portal.azure.com yeah but i'm saying about here in this space in your right side you will have your 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 uh, and okay, email and one. then okay. we'll have yeah box. yeah i can see that yes. okay just go to resource group here and you'll find the resource group there make sure that you have it it's already created by okay. them itself by default and then go for create new resource and then create a, a cosmos db account just say cosmos db right. here and try to create it so shashank uh, mm -hmm. we have to give the permission to microsoft learn sandbox right First yes 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 we have to enable that so it will tell you that it is activated already if you go go to my one right uh, let me just go back it says that it is already activated for me so see here it says it is activated for me mm -hmm. then only you can do that because it will create the account then only it says it had activated here like this okay just go here and then go down you find the account name here just give some account name maybe i would say uh, cosmos db uh, hol1 okay so here uh, see this is what i mentioned right we have an option to give whatever the apis you want to use it but i want to go with sql so i'll go click on this here and location as i mentioned you better to map it with your uh, same location of your rg right this is rg i have given it right it automatically takes it up and then give the same location so that it will be in the same data center and uh, then make this geo redundancy as disabled and multiple region rights enable so what does it mean it means that whenever someone writes into your nearby region it will automatically replicate in all the other regions there okay so i'll say uh, review and create it yeah first i yes, need yes. to create a new uh, cosmos uh, db account right 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 with your uh, rg okay. it'll have only one rg there found out that level is that So uh, it's saying that validation is successful. I'll say create it. It'll take around few minutes to create it. Okay, so it may take around one to two minutes. I'll wait for everyone to create it. So once everyone is able to create it, you'll find this kind of landing page. any question let me know let's wait for a minute again so that everyone can do it what do we need to give in the account name give some meaningful name but uh, everyone is able to uh, see this deployment in progress right okay in the meantime let's go back and try to work on the slides so okay let me just go forward it has it has got even comprehensive sls right which means that it has got less than 10 minute 10 milliseconds of latency that is 99.999 percent that is nothing but five nines it's kind of highest level of uh, guarantee there in one high availability and guaranteed throughput and consistency also so again this is all trusted with the uh, world security uh, compliances whatever this class of compliances we have it it is all supporting it here inside the azure okay so let's let's come back again to this place and confirm it and so i'm i'm just trying to wait for this because i, was, I wanted to show you the uh, kind of how does it look like and what all we can do it inside the system so once i show this then i can go with our use concept as i mentioned the the importance of reuse is very very much, very very kind of uh, required in terms of your uh, creating a queries or creating a data models is very much required there because the cost is very high there which means that i'll give you an example this kind of real real example is 
maybe around a few weeks back i tried to create an uh, kind of an uh, ingestion layer which is kind of taking around 10000 rus and i'm very pretty much huge because i'm working on a real time data set so i just gave that uh, account there and i tried to work late night i slept off on, on, on there itself because of uh, late night at around 2 to 2:33 o'clock late night so i couldn't I couldn't work much i slept there itself next day morning the bill is around 90k so the throughput is very high but the cost is also very high for it so make sure that the uh, kind of the costing is the most important thing that you have to consider and to to solve that we have to know the understanding on rus what is ru how do we reduce this rus and optimize your queries so we'll see those kind of concept because it is all level 400 so i want to concentrate only on that space but i will just kind of give you a hands on on this space also okay so um, your session yeah. one minute uh, yes. redundancy and multi region right should be enabled or disabled uh your redundancy can you can disable it it's not required for us for our examples but uh, say multi reads is enabled and you guys you can do okay. it later on also but just kind of i'm just giving you the understanding that's it okay okay so uh okay this is what is the landing page like it looks like click on this data explorer this is a sql api as i mentioned that we can only create one api we can't use multiple apis inside it Okay. Yeah. So let me just go back. So this is what you can do. You can create your containers, databases. So we'll see what all these things, right? What is container? What database? What is items? So we'll see. Go back and see all those things now. Okay. So like this is what it looks like. The highest level is account, which we created just now. Okay. And an account can have multiple databases. like this account is nothing but our login to credentials and giving you the uh, kind of account access the kind of creating your uh, cosmos db account right that we've done it just now okay and then once you have done with it the next step is to go with creating your databases so the databases can be one or more okay and in the same way databases can contain containers and containers can contain items so if you see i would uh, say i guess everyone is new to this no sql concept right so i would map i would like to map this no sql uh, concept with your traditional db concept so database is same database we know it right we can create multiple database under another server and the database can contain multiple tables table is nothing but a container and logical level i'm not saying exactly same but i'm just trying to give a kind of correlation between them a table is equal to your container here and then the each row is nothing but an item clear hope everyone is clear right i'm just trying to simplify this each database can have kind of each account can have multiple databases and multiple database can have multiple container nothing but tables and each table can contain multiple item nothing but rows okay so container can be defined with whatever the apis you want to use it like it can be graph collection or table whatever it is okay and items can be mapped let's say if it is collection right if it is a collection collection data model the item is mapped as documents if it is graph data model we call it as what is it or edges the so table we call it as row so this way we define our items so let's go and see those things today and it is not only this we can even create store procedures inside a container we can create store procedures we can create triggers we can create udfs uh, so inside that hope everyone is not hearing any echo from my side right because i just kind of switched on my fan let me know if you are able to uh, hear it properly it's fine okay thank you so it can even create a store process of such as triggers and udfs okay this is what at a higher level we can define all these things in parallel to the items so now let's go forward and create them okay so let's go and create them actually let me just show here this is what we've done it right now i'll go through command prompt because you want to manage these things it's generally recommended to go with command prompt okay so let's let's try to go with that also next to continue here so we'll see what are used and all this thing later on I'll, i'll come to this point very soon let's go with partitioning this is also okay we'll come to this point also go to the 5 of 6 see the drop down here at the top you'll find five that is creating database container and and cosmos db 
okay so here we are going to work on this steps here okay so uh, here you can go go back and say i want to create sorry i want to create a next one is i mentioned after account it is after after db it is database here so create a database called or you can just directly go here and say create a container it will ask you for db also here so what i am trying to do is i'll just go to drop down of uh, sql api and i'll say new container so inside the container i'll say it as let's say uh, it is uh, db id sometimes just give some meaningful name and i'll just say here uh, container cosmos some some name okay and i can give the uh, or let's say i can give it as let's say customers this is a table name right just give some meaningful name here so here if you observe it i give it as clothing here so i can just give same thing here clothing okay and then this is a very very important thing the partition key is what we define it only one time right let's say if you even take the table also we define the partitioning only once right it is not a kind of awfully created so the same way in cosmos db the most important thing the most most important thing because our use are completely dependent on this the i would say that the kind of the most important key to define in the inside this cosmos db is partition key only okay so we have to define this in optimistic way so that it will not impact your our use and by default our use are 400 by default okay so i can just give here let's say uh, i can just give some value here let me just go here and see this plot id guess okay let me go here and say i'll say uh, just give some some name something here floating id something and say okay so now it is creating your uh, kind of partition key kind of table with partition key inside this and if you open this you'll have multiple things here like kind of let's say items nothing but the rows so here we don't have any rows because it's an empty one we're not able to see anything inside this but we can create on your own you can create your store procs create your udfs triggers right you can create all these things inside this so let's go let's go one by one and see all these things going forward okay clear and everyone any questions just uh, till this point everyone is clear right how do we create it i just want to go deeper uh, just in few minutes okay now uh, hope everyone is clear let me just go to chat window and see it okay fine so now we created a cosmos db account then created a database called clothing sorry uh, db id then we created a table name called clothing and inside we can add our uh, tables like let's say you want to add a new item nothing but new record a review a default one like this okay so you can do a, whatever you want to you can even scale up and scale down the throughput here according to your requirements okay so now let's go back and start creating from scratch using your resource groups so let me just go to resource group here i'll just come back everyone okay now this is the place where right we have it just go and say delete account we come back again we'll try to create from from your uh, command prompt so i'll say uh, this is account name right uh, everyone can delete this and say delete we have seen how to create a base account now we'll try to kind of extend this requirement in a lo longer term process okay so i'm just deleting this and i'll go back to my slides now so what is an ru because this is ru is by default 400 right so but actually what is this ru why should we consider this what is the partition id we'll see those things now okay so the billing is done on through two, two things one is a storage account what what you are storing out and other one is throughput okay so through again we we have seen we have seen this storage account right storage account as per gb it is all ssds only there is no hdds all are ssds only by default okay Uh, so the the kind of the retrieval is faster than and enough or faster than whatever we have it and the pricing is costing you around uh, 0.25 dollars per per gb per month which is which is kind of little little compared to blob it is a little costier right 
but yeah it is going on ssd so it is obviously if you go with the azure blob with premium accounts that this is what is the same cost you're getting it out and the other one very important thing is provision throughput so for a single region as i mentioned you the rights are defined in the multi region right if you creating this account you have this option called enable for multi multi region right so so what happens when when you have a single region like like your, your company is only in one region maybe in india that's it you can create only single region rights so it will be retrieval is only for indian region maybe, maybe example is flipkart but if you go with amazon it is multi region right so it is difficult for us to handle it with single system so whatever let's say if you have two regions it will cost you around 0.016 dollar per kind of per hour per 100 rus so this is a little cost here here right and the same way we have it here with uh, costing you around uh, 0.08 dollars per hour per 100 rus it is double again here if it is three times it is three regions you want to replicate it it will be 3 into 3 of this so accordingly your bill will be consumed got me right that the building is contains consisting of two things storage and throughput so we have this one and this one here why am i telling about billing again here the reason is as i mentioned you right the most important thing is how do you reduce your billing how do you optimize your query to retrieve it in a more better way that's the reason we are going with this okay so again the very important point is they might vary from region to region maybe the region what you take might be little cost here lesser based upon the units so now we understood but what is this ru right so let's go and see that so ru ru is nothing but request units is basically a rate based currency uh, so we can have like uh, let's say 400 ru as i mentioned the, the default thing the cost will be given out here like if it is 400 this is a cost you incur and what is ru or is nothing but combination of percentage of memory percentage of cpu percentage of ios so it basically combines all the things and forms your ru okay so this ru but how do i understand in real time like let's say uh, how much ru will it cost for my document or let's say from my uh, db right so this is a kind of overall approximate answers for this this is not exactly same but this might this is kind of very close to your your thought process that is if you want to read one kb document that is costing you one ru okay so 1 kb is costing you uh, for read operation is costing you 1 ru same way 1 1 kb of write write is costing you 5 rus so this is a kind of very high level thing which you are giving it out approximately and this will be almost same kind of almost this is what it is happening out so accordingly we have to define like how many rus how many requests you get it out every day every minute so based on that you can define your rus maybe late night it might be reduced right you reduce it off Early morning it will be very higher. Maybe in afternoon time it is very higher. Or big billion day we have a higher higher R use. Increase it often, kind of reduce it. That's what the intention here is. And it is also depending on your top queries. This is the most important thing. Okay. So what does query means? Like what are the most common user transactions they are doing it? They're going with electronic devices mostly, or they're going with uh, let's say a kind of recommendations mostly. This might be the important queries, right? so you have to define understand this ru how much cost is uh, is each my query happening out if someone is going to the amazon portal and trying to read what is there let's say uh, now one plus came out one plus that everyone is trying to access one plus so the the, the the query will be modified there right now it is it is recommended to have a kind of better ru for the for the specific electronic goods so the top five queries are very important for this we'll why we'll see why 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 again okay so now let's estimate the cost of it so single write let's say i'm getting around 10000 writes per second maybe someone is shipping a kind of let's say trying to order something and they uh, they are around 10000 orders per second let's say they the kind of they are moving into the shopping cart and uh, purchasing it there are around 10000 rus per second okay, sorry 10000 requests per second and each write operation is costing me around 10 rus approximately the cost of this is around 1 lakh rus this is a cost of write operation every day for me sorry every every second for me okay so and again we have top one query which means that like most commonly used one what can be most commonly used maybe uh, someone might be uh, kind of in really in this particular region i have most people using the uh, kind of the products which are electronic goods so i define my query accordingly 
I'll, I'll define my query to to kind of search for those things only. Maybe or let's say maybe the landing page itself has a huge ad every time. So whatever the ad we place it there, I want to retrieve that data faster. That will be my top one query here. So the top one query around 700 requests I'm getting it per second, and I'm getting so I have to use around 100 RUs for this query only. So my cost is going out around 70,000 RUs. The same way you can take around top five queries, right? And then define your RUs here per second. So it is around two lakh RUs uh, per second we're getting it out. Clear, everyone? Any questions here? Maybe just want to kind of touch base it again, if you require. Okay. Yeah, fine. I guess there's no questions here. So one more very important thing is the guidance. Like, how do you define your query? So you want to know that if this query is most commonly used, or kind of we can just have a have a load run on top of this, uh, and then scale up and scale down and see how is it working out. Then come to the conclusion of defining how many RUs you want to define. Because this RUs is what you define it will cost you accordingly. Even if you don't use it, it will cost you. So make sure that you reduce this immediately after use, right? So, uh, and if, let me just go forward and tell you a few more things. So let's say if, you, if you're getting around, uh, let's say 10,000 RUs per second, maybe your application is giving you 10,000 RUs per second. I would say increase it by 10 to 15 times. Maybe say, let's say it has 15,000 uh, RUs uh, per second. That's a kind of higher limit so that you don't have any latency issues or you don't have any kind of queue, queue transactions there happening out, okay? Okay, that's all okay. Yeah, so let's do one thing now. Let's go back and create this account through your. So I'm trying to go back and front both because I'm trying to make sure that you understand the concept here and then come back and do it again. Okay, so first we tried to do with manual approach. Now we'll go back and start creating with your better approach now. So let's go and see here if it is there or not. I hope everyone is kind of uh, removed this here. So now I'll go back to my, again, uh, working on, so see, see here we have an option called working work with uh, NoSQL DB, on top here, click on that. So now we created the first one, because first one is done for us. Right, we created the first one. Now let's go with the other one. Now this is all we can see it later on. I guess the end point is, you can just go, go there and read it. Okay, now let's go concentrate on our uh, inserting the query data in Cosmos DB. Okay, so we'll see how do we insert the data, how do we kind of update your records, and we'll see those, those things through command prompt. Okay, click on this exercise setup so everyone can go to your uh, work on work with NoSQL data with Cosmos DB and go down to the third module where we have the uh, kind of uh, insert a query into your Azure. Cosmos DB database. Okay, just click on this exercise setup. So this is the beauty of this. See here, it is giving me the kind of shell shell command here itself in parallel. So let's say activate sandbox. It creates a shell command here itself. You can directly do a shell command here, uh, CLI commands, and it will automatically impact in your system. Hope everyone is in sync with me till this point. Any questions? I am ready to help you out. Any, any issues? Let me know. And again, this this uh, command sand kind of concept of sandboxes is not available for third party like uh, data breaks and all these things. So you can try with uh, all Azure uh, specific things. You'll find it out. Okay, Swati, you're lagging. It's okay. I guess I'll wait for some time. Anyone else is lagging behind? Let me know on no, 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 itself. Hello. 
session we need to choose the appropriate api for azure azure uh, cosmos db storage right yeah but don't create it now because we removed it now just okay. now we removed that account now we are doing it from okay. the command prompt we'll do it come everything from from command prompt now just go to your work uh, with nosql db and uh, you find third module called insert and query data with cosmos db and uh, there we find the exercise account that is 2 2 out of 8 go go to this place i'll just wait for a minute okay unable to drop the account uh, so can you try it again if not let's let's kind of move ahead there's some issue might be with your account can you refresh it once again can you refresh go back to your resource group and refresh it and which option in this choose the appropriate api do we have to select the use core sql to store a product catalog which one no you you are which which one are you trying to do now uh, we entered the next, uh, next, next phase right yeah, okay, okay, the, 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 okay i would say yeah if you're in the old assignment no, 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 I am into this uh, Microsoft loan. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, Ishaq, you're audible. Hello, this is Kumar Abhinav. Uh, I'm not sure if Shashank is there on, or it just dropped off. Hey, Shashank, are you there? Hello, Shashank. Hello, are you able to hear me? Hello? Yeah, yeah, now we are. Hello? Yeah. Oh, okay. So because I had some issue with power here, some frustration happened out. Oh. So suddenly we are, uh, we're not able to see that. We can hear you. Okay. So I'm trying to log in with my phone now. Yeah, there is an uh, echo. Uh, someone, uh, someone opened up. Someone, someone created it again. Okay, okay. I'm just talking about it. You can be on mute, please. Yeah, now it's fine. So, let me just go back and try seeing this. Hope everyone is able to hear me, right? Let me just kind of ping anyone, ping it out, please, so I'll understand it. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, yeah. Okay, thank you. So, that's fine. So, let, let, let me know if um, maybe I kind of, I might miss it out sometime. So, so now what I'll do is, so we have the account here, right? Subscription account here. So click on this. And let's create it inside this now. So, I guess the problem is, uh, uh, 
uh, it'll create a new resource group now when you go to the next second next, second assignment third assignment it will create a new 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 resource group there. so don't worry about it so now we'll go and say we can then go to your uh, internal query data to cosmos db so we'll go down and it will ask you step by step process now so i'll just copy it here so now what i'm trying to do is i'm create trying to create a variable called name and i'm giving some name here don't copy paste this like this only just copy the command paste it here and then give the name here some any meaningful name don't give the same name give some let's say so it is cosmos db hol we will say so give some name now let's say something 1 2 okay so i'll just say enter okay so when i say enter it creates a variable called name with this name okay and let's go down and i'll create the cosmos db with this credentials with the copy of this command prompt copy this and paste it here Cosmos DB dot create my uh, hyphen name name is the name what we gave it here and kind as global DB and the resource group is this is one what we are going to create see okay now it basically goes back and creates your account inside this here okay so it might take around five ten minutes oh so something happened now out activity. Okay, so just give everything as small as there. Just give it as small as. This. this is again a problem there. Just, just give it as Cosmos, TV, HOL. Just give everything small letters there and say enter. And give your data mind. Okay, it takes around few minutes, maybe around five to 10 minutes in between because it takes a little time for us. In the meantime, we can go for a break. I'll go for a break and come back and we'll see that after that, how do you extend this? How do you create your documents from command prompt? How do you create your items? We'll see all those things going forward. Any questions till this point, anyone? Yep. Yeah. Sorry, I think I missed out. Like, how did you open this PowerShell window? Like... Oh, okay, okay. So basically, when you go to work with NoSQL DB, right? Let me just go there and show you that. I'll bring you into here. Right? This is what it shows you. Go to the third third module. That is inserting. So let me just go click on this. This is the third module. First one we saw that, right? We saw okay. it through our portal. The third one is inserting data and querying data. So this again, this is the second assignment here. Click on size two, and say activate your sandbox here. It creates a signing account here. Automatically. Okay. So sometimes you will not be able to see because maybe your uh, company portal is not allowing us to access through the this place. It can happen because last time I had this issue with the Cobra Center where they're not able to open this up. Okay. Uh, like, uh, can you please paste the command which you uh, okay. wrote in the chat box? Okay. So let me just go there. So I just gave here as this one, a kind of export name is equal to, if I get instead of this account name, like this bracket account name, I just give my own name, that's it. Okay. Just give some meaningful name here. And go down and uh, just make sure that you copy paste this because it is giving the resource group automatically. Dynamic one. Okay. So I'm just going to find this account here. Maybe if you will take around five ten minutes approximately to create it. Yeah, just creating now. See here. Let's see now. It's still creating out. You can just see it after five five ten minutes. Okay. So any other questions, anyone? Okay, someone got some questions, some issues. I'm no, getting alert saying that does please. not. Actually, I replaced yeah. my resource group there. Should I uh, keep the same? Yeah, yeah. So because the resource group, okay. So okay. sorry. Uh, so sorry. Yes, uh, what, yes, what happens? 
uh, you unmute, please. Okay. So I'll come up one by one. Uh, first question is from Sabine. So Virin, uh, the, the the thing is that when you're going to the new uh, account, right? Like 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 this new module, it creates a new resource group. It delete the old resource group and create a new resource group. Okay. So in this resource group, it's automatically giving you this account. So if you can go back to your portal, right? You can go to go, go back to again resource group, and then see here you find a new resource group here. Then open that and and, and get a PDF, and then it will work. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because it is not the old resource group anymore. Okay. Yeah, and it's from Mayuri. Still bad request, so it might be an issue with your name or the same issue what what uh, Virin is also facing it. <laughs> Yes. Uh, so while creating the Cosmos DB uh, for the Azure CI lab, the resource group also gets created. Uh, what's the default location that would use in this case? Where it, would it create? So, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's basically here, right? It's it's giving south, south, central south, south Central US is a default, is it? I mean, default. I, yeah, resource default. Yeah, resource group. So default. if I want, uh, there would be some uh, extra parameters to pass in if I want to change the. Yes, yes. yes. Like, like kind of you're seeing here, right? Here, right? You can define it. Uh, define it. Uh, define a uh, um, uh, uh, location. location. Yeah. Okay. Give, Give it the name. There. So yeah, as I mentioned, right, you can guess where you have this uh, name coming out because it might be that you might already have the same name already created by someone else. So better maybe we kind of can go back and remove that and create a new name. Okay. So let me just go back with the questions. Okay, no more questions. So we'll go for a break and come back in 15 minutes. Now it is around 20. So we'll come back in 15 minutes. We we'll continue with this. Okay. So I'll just time a tab. Okay, Swati, once we are back, we'll see your issues. What are we have it? Maybe I'll come in 10 minutes. We can catch up there. Okay.
Swati, if you're back, let let me know. I guess we can discuss now. If anyone else has got any questions, let me know. We have five minutes time, so in the meantime, you can solve the questions. Ah, uh, yeah, sir. Ah, uh, yeah, Asha Shankar, I'm there. Yeah, thank you. So let me know what is the question or what is the issue you're facing right out. Okay, screen, actually, maybe. I I have deleted the the resource group which we have made uh, earlier. Okay. We have to do that, right? Mm-hmm. And now no, no, we should not am, do it. Uh, so basically, we should not do it. It will do by itself. Oh. If you're moving from one port, one module, other module, right? It will okay. do by itself. You don't need to do it. Okay. Actually, I manually deleted it from there. But okay, oh. I have created it's another. Uh, yeah. No, don't create it. Don't another create one. it. Oh. You create a, once you can share your screen and show me. So I guess I am confused now. So basically, okay. there are two things, right? So I'll explain you one thing. First thing is we are doing it through portal, right? Yeah. So first, yeah. first module is to kind of go through portal and do it. That we have done it. Second part, right. second, that's a very basic thing, which means that just kind of introducing you, how does it look like? Second thing is more about uh, doing uh, through command prompt, right? So when you go into the second one, the second module, then the first module will be deleted automatically. The resource group, or let's say the Cosmos DB, everything will be deleted there. And okay. when you go to second one, then you will be able to see the content there. When you go, when you go and create the Cosmos DB account, right? You'll be able to see that it is getting created from command prompt. This is what it looks looks like like here. Okay. Okay, I'll just share the screen. Yeah, it's better to share your screen and show me. Anyone else? Any questions? Anyone? Uh, in the meantime. Can you give me control, please? Uh, Lata, can you can you give her control? I don't have control over it. Lata, you there? I guess you and she left for the break. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, let me try to kind of map with you. So now you are in this portal, right? If you just can go to resource groups, what are you seeing here? Now I can see the Azure Cloud shell. Inside the Azure, uh, Microsoft Learn. Okay, Microsoft Learn, you are able to see the Azure Cloud cell, right? Okay. Right. So, okay, now I, may, I guess here uh, Tarun is sharing it. No, no, someone is sharing it. Okay, that's fine. So, uh, just go down and you find something called as uh, export, export name, name right. and the bracket, right? Just remove that account right. name and give you a name there. Remove the brackets account name. And give you a name. Just okay. copy, copy that, copy that, paste it in okay. your cloud shell. Okay. Okay. Yeah, paste, paste it right, and and just kind of remove that uh, uh, kind of the flower brackets and account name, and give you a name mm -hmm. there. Give the this will be the name of your Cosmos DB. So just give some let's say okay. Cosmos DB hyphen kind of some, some name, some name better better okay. name for it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Done. 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 Right. Say enter. Right. Okay. Yeah. Done. Okay. Enter right, and then right. go down. Go down. Now you are trying to create a Cosmos DB account. Go down. You find okay. the other copy paste account now here. Say AZ AZ Cosmos DB create by right. see here uh, dollar name nothing but the variable name what you created it. It is passing dynamically into this. I am creating a global document okay. DB and resource group is the same thing. Don't change this. This is the same thing what you have it. Just copy this and paste it here. And again say execute. Now this will take around uh, five to okay. six minutes approximately. Okay, we don't have to change anything over here, right? No, no, just kind of keep it as it is and push it off. Okay. Operation failed with bad request. The character so percentage what is, the... is not allowed. Okay, so you give the name. Don't don't give anything. You kind of give it a small case letters and one two three something. Or your, your employee ID. Don't give underscores and something else there. Okay. But the double quotes is allowed, right? Double quotes is required for the name okay. because it is basically kind of variable, right? So the kind of dynamically passing the variable name into it.
again it is giving us bad request again bad request what what is the error getting now the character percentage at index 0 is not allowed in the database account name yeah so you gave some character some there no i Maybe just give the, the give this name i'll give you a ping you the name i'll just can you give the same name okay uh I'll just ping you the name here ping to in the chat window just give see the same name and try to okay. paste it and try it out now just click on the up arrow just go to your command shell and say, click on the up arrow don't type every time write it out yeah i hope everyone is back let's start in a minute because i'm trying to solve some issue here and in the meantime hope everyone is able to see their uh, account resource group with the cosmos db account inside it right like this you should be able to see that uh, hello shashank one question yes so uh, so if i give uh, my throughput at a database level uh, so will it be shared across all the containers in the database yes 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 it will be shared out okay you can have a We have two options, right? You can go with the better level, or or your. Uh, so I'll, I'll come to that point. I'll tell you that point also, maybe. I'll come to that. You know, this kind of have a use case, which is in a higher level. So I'll show you that. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Swati, you're able to do it, right? Oh no, it gave again the same error. I'm just sharing my screen if uh, if you okay. don't mind. Just can you just do it faster? Moment. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. Screen, Go to no? command prompt. Yes. One second. Just hold off. A bad request. Percentages. Okay. Just remove the brackets. Why are you having these brackets here? Name. Okay. You should not have the bracket name. Brackets there. Just kind of click on the up arrow again. Up arrow. Yeah. Again up arrow. Yeah. Remove the brackets. There also. Enter. Yeah. Again. Go up arrow. Two times. Yeah, enter. That's it. You're done. It'll work for you now. Okay. Okay. So you can just I should start you. taking my screen now. Yeah. Yeah. So well, yeah, let's move forward. Now we could now everyone is in sync. I guess uh, we are able to see this in the data explorer. We are able to see the empty pane here because we don't have anything as containers or DBs or anything else here. We didn't create anything yet. So now let's go and do it one by one through our command prompt. Okay, so as of now we created the Cosmos DB account. Next one is to go with the DB, right? So let's go down and uh, go down, and you'll be able to see something called as uh, this one: AZ Cosmos DB database. Create this name. So I want to create a database with the uh, inside this name account, and the database name is products. The resource group is this one. So I'm going to create a database. inside this account and the database name is products and the resource group is this one so i'll just say copy this and paste it here so it will create it'll be faster only it'll take around half a minute i guess yeah so you should be able to see this kind of thing right where you'll find that it has created now let's go back to your portal hope everyone got this right no one no issues okay so see here id is products now let me just go to my uh, portal again and inside the portal refresh this now so you find products database here but inside the product database we don't have anything so we'll start creating the containers now in parallel okay hope this is interesting if you are you trying to do uh, something out of the box so we'll try to uh, see them and this is required because we are trying to automate this process whenever required So now what I want to do is now I wanted to once I created my DB right next thing one is to go with containers or we call it a collection also collection and container both the same same naming conventions so see here I am saying that uh, 
create a collection uh, with inside the name called name inside the name called database name called products and the collection name is called as clothing so as i mentioned the partition key is the most most important thing so that's the reason why it is defaultly required to create it here we cannot create a table or kind of a collection without the product key for the id okay and i've given a throughput as 1000 here and resource group is this one so i'll copy this i'll go to my shell command i'll paste it here and say enter now within 2 uh, minutes you'll within a half minute you'll be able to see this also so you'll find like this okay this all kind of references inside the cosmos db you don't worry about it so let me go back to my portal now and refresh this so you'll be able to see my clothing now this is what we've done it manually right so we are doing it automatically now so till this point we've done it manually from your portal now we are trying to use our command prompt to define that clear everyone till this point everyone hope everyone is able to do it so now we created till the point called collections uh, that is nothing but a clothing okay with the partition key as product id okay so we are going down and say now check your work just click, see this here there is something called check your work when you click on this it allocate you the points which means that it will go back to your portal and see if this is created with the same naming convention or not and then say it is successful click on this it says it is successful now see this everyone got this right i hope everyone got it i'll wait for a minute let's before moving forward okay so let's continue let's continue i'll wait see it in the chat window any questions here okay so uh, any questions yeah can we walk through that respond and the or you you close that that shell i closed it actually oh, yeah, that, no that's, yeah that, that's all more about the log generated in the back end that's more okay. about mapping to that oh, okay okay so now this can be done through your uh, as as we have seen that right this can be done through your rest apis or native sdk with python c sharp so the reason why i am pointing this point here again is this all can be done through databricks right when we have python control we can write the right query in databricks and create all transformations uh, and map it to your system right that is possible here okay okay so now now we have the items so let me just go here i have item c here the items is done here right this is all empty now which means that the table tables are created a table called clothing i have a db called products so it's that we have a table called clothing and i want to uh, uh, insert a record into it nothing but an item so in order to do that just go down into the second one right it is one point so third third unit inside the third module third unit go down so you have a record to copy it just copy this see here you have an option copy click on this copy it will be copied automatically so here we have id equal to 1 product id product id is equal to this much category is equal to this much manufacturing description price shipping and all those things so this is all nothing but json formatted right so if you see this there is a sub section also inside it inside this record we have a sub record also defined as in the name of shipping so we'll come to this point of why why did we define this and when should we define this and all those things but as of now let's let's copy directly okay i just give a hint that this is what is it we have to consider it that there is a shipping inside your sub section copy this and go to your portal and say new item on top you find when you click on your items right you find a new item here click on this it creates a new pane just remove this off and paste your code control v and save it just click on the new item paste your code remove the old code and paste your new code and say save it okay this is done now In the same way again go down now we'll take one more one more record second record here and copy it and create a new item again here i might be going a little faster let me know so i'll say save 
okay now i created two records inside my table called clothing clear till this point everyone i hope everyone is clear till this point let me just see the questions any questions let me know now okay so uh, now i created this accounts and i saved it it is done there and we have first record and second record here so next thing is to read this data right so we have to records if you see here like this and say let me let me use sql api to read the data okay so like it looks like this if you go to the next section right unit 4 i can see that there is a kind of context of how do we leverage the sql so it is the same our old sql querying language nothing different inside it, it is the same as it is if you see down the example there is a kind of from exam from condition where condition order by join is one condition we have it here and we have select start from product table right where p dot id equal to 1 just copy it as it is okay and go to your uh, portal you find something here right see this sorry this one oh, sorry one second yeah you find next to your next to your drop down button we find something called as new sql query everyone is able to see it i guess let me know if you are not able to see that you'll find something as like this A new sql query click on that and paste this okay and say execute the query it goes back and reads the json file and gives the result here like this okay clear let's go and try one few more so now i want to get only few records where this is the id here right i can even try this also it's okay so remove this off so execute you find those records only here like three records okay so if you observe this is almost same same as you are working on your uh, sql db but thing is it output is in json format that's it okay so uh, let me i guess this all you can try it out later on i don't want to can i just give you alias names and all those things and sub document this is what i mentioned right so how do you retrieve your sub document shipping this is what is there na so you can just directly go here and say products dot shipping okay getting me everyone i am trying to read only the data which is there inside shipping let's copy this and go here and paste this code here and say execute you get only the shipping related information here like first one is for shipping second one is for shipping clear everyone and again we have a dimension inside it so if you want to get the dimensions you say dot dimensions and say execute get only those records getting me everyone i hope it is clear right till this point any questions here let me know the same way if you want to get a weight of this you can just say shipping dot weight and get this records one and two so just say here instead of this one just say this the intelligence intelligence is enabled here so just say this you get the records okay so sorry, wait a second wait get two records here okay so the same way we can define your uh, requirements accordingly so you may apply your way conditions can define your your order by clauses can define your join conditions of two tables like product I, and product shipping yeah can i say select product dot shipping dot weight from product will it have the same result select uh, what is it select product dot shipping dot weight from uh -huh. product i guess it should come let me try it and try it actually but let me try it out we will try it out what happens this it's okay so i'll just say this one right yeah yeah take this and put in this one yeah it's coming out 
define a new okay, array for each one. New array for each one. That's it. You just for everything. Yeah, thank you. So for single list, it is given multiple lists. Yes. So Sashank, like while yeah. defining yes. a table, so have, have you mentioned anywhere that the data will be of type JSON? No, no, it is by default the Cosmos DB is handled by JSON data. JSON. Okay. Yes, by default it is JSON. Any 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 API you take it up, it will be JSON only. So basic question: What is the underlying database type here? Because did we specify something that this is the type of database? No, no, we didn't define anything, but it's by default document DB. Document uh, DB. Yeah, document DB by default. And if I have to go with something else, I have to do no. some. No, we don't have an option because by default is defined with uh, document DB. The storage is kind of nothing but uh, JSON formatted. But if you want to go with Gremlin or something else, right? You can define the data model there. That's it. Yeah, for example, you told uh, we can have a graph DB or yes, something. Yes, yes. So, so that's all. There are nothing but data models there. Like data, if you model. Want to data model there, you can use that. But all will be in, in JSON format only. Yeah. Okay. So if we want to insert in XML or CSV format, we can also do right. XML and CSV, no. So I don't, we don't have we have we have only option of going with JSON here. Okay. So like if 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 we have the underlying data in the form of XML and if I want to insert it to Cosmos DB, we cannot. Then you have to convert it into a SQL JSON. JSON here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fine. And push it out. That you can do it in the database there. Transformation there. So Shijang, initially while we're creating it, we defined a partition ID. So yes. here, when you say you went to product, then to wait and further, does it yes. have any relation with it? Or if we yes, define exactly. it better, it could save us some cost. Right. That's what I'm about to come there because I didn't go to the concept of partitioning yet. But I just want to introduce this concept and go back and again touch base that. Now we'll okay. go to the concept of partitioning ID. We have a detail, uh, maybe around half an hour session for that only. So we'll go with that. Soon. Okay, so yeah, now now uh, one more very important thing is let, let's go go and try it out this answers here and let me know if you have any questions here inside this. So let me just go to the next one. I'll come to that point uh, just in few very few minutes. Okay, so now uh, what I can do is I can go back and write my query saying that select start from C. What C means is that the entire Cosmos DB, whatever data we have, it retrieve it. It can be n number of tables, n number of systems. It will create those number of records. It creates everything in one place. It reads all the documents, all the kind of items inside it. Okay, so that's one very important point to discuss. And we'll come to the store procs and uh, store procedures maybe later on. But uh, let me just go back and work on our remaining things. Now, now we understood that how to create the uh, concept of creating documents. Sorry, creating your items, creating your uh, kind of uh, partition IDs, and then we went with creating your uh, collections, containers, then your DBs. So we have seen this whole flow, right? Now let's go go back and understand each one by one. Okay, this is all monthly costing part. Yeah. So the most important thing is it's more about defining a data modeling, right? So there are two extremes actually. One is the NoSQL, and the, the other one is a SQL, right? It both both represent the same data, but the thing is that the approach is different. It's a little different. That's it. So if you see example of uh, SQL, right, it is more about normalizing everything, kind of creating the tables and mapping with the foreign keys accordingly. Uh, but here it is all embedding into one piece, right? Like if you have seen example of products, schemas, right, it's all fitting into one place. So uh, for kind of example as products and shipping, right? Shipping and dimensions, the weights. So it's all coming kind of coming into one hierarchy in one embedding piece. But uh, in the same thing, if you want to define it in your DB, right? We create multiple tables for it, like shipping table or the product table, clothing table. There are multiple tables we have it, right? So now I'll take an example of contours or restaurant venue. This is very important, guys. Just uh, from this point, it is very very important because we're going with the concept of optimizing this and reducing cost it's more about level 400 where we are trying to define the architectures in a better way okay so i would say just take around 10 15 minutes with me and you can try to understand in a more better way and also the concept also okay so we have a menu item here right like menu id item name item description category id and we even have category also category id category name and all those things so this is a table like generally we have two tables right so this is more more about relational data modeling, like how we have normalizing the data in our no normal SQL DBs. 
but when you go with no sql right everything will be placed in one place like all the id tape, uh, name item description category id and again the category name and description is all placed in one place like this okay but i'll give you one challenge we have to know when to define as an embedded one when to define as a reference one it is not that that we cannot do the referencing part like how we do it with our uh, sql db inside the no sql we can do it but thing is that we have to consider when to do what right the first challenge is that to embed this or not we have a menu card menu name and inside the menu name, we have multiple items here so do we have to embed like this or do we have to reference the id here right yeah, Add a reference ID here and map that to your another another uh, embed and another maybe a table or a kind of a kind of a collection. And map it to it. We can do that, right? So it's up to us. How do you want to define it? But when to choose what? In terms of RUs, in terms of cost optimizations, in terms of performance uh, execution. So we'll see those parameters and define when to use what. Okay, this is very very important again. Okay, so let's take an example of this. When to embed? This is one case I'm giving you. First case when when we have to consider embedding it. So if you see here, I have item name hamburger, item description, categories, and category description, and I have ingredients here. So it is always required that a, a item should always be mapped with their ingredients. Any food product should be mapped with their ingredients, right? For sure, we have to do it. So it's better to recommend. It's recommended to embed it. Get getting me right? Let's see example. So the recipe the ingredients are always varied with an item we cannot differentiate that item will be as a different one and ingredients are different ones we can't do that so it's better to embed it in one place so whenever you have a dependency model of this kind then it's better to kind of map it because the reading will be very faster so uh, shashank here yeah. uh, so all the hamburgers whatever uh, is the different types yes all the hamburgers will have bread that is a common uh, ingredient but mm -hmm. we are kind of putting it in every hamburger uh, uh, yeah. description or the ingredient so isn't this going to take a lot of storage if we uh, just no. reference this? Uh, okay yeah what i said is right but uh, from the reading perspective right because writing perspective what i said is right but how many hamburgers will you have maximum of 3 4 4 varieties five varieties right not more than that so i mean if you have 100 varieties then yeah if what is said what is said the point is right but if you have only three or four varieties it's hardly matters to have it in a independent oh, one, right? okay i i see right. i i thought he, this is from a sale perspective, perspective oh, uh, it is it is like a master data you are saying yes yes okay right. so we are trying to create uh, this whole as a table now it's not just uh, one uh, kind of only item information here and ingredients as a different entity we are not doing it we're trying to merge both this and we're kind of considering when to embed uh, and when not to embed like if you see example here right here we're not embedding it because menu and items can change right so it is not always dependent on this so we can have our own uh, kind of if we have drop down or kind of considerations it will go very easily there so uh, here it is always recommended to have it we don't have any option to have a drop down or kind of filter conditions because hamburger by default requires to have all the ingredients mentioned about it so uh, it is always to be embedded it is required to be embedded here right next next case so first one is about the default dependency kind of the kind of in parallel dependencies there other one is chain dependency like let's say any order cannot go without an item right we cannot have shipping card without an item there so the order should always be mapped with an item so whatever item we choose it in particular order one will always be mapped with the items so now inside this i can define my content i can embed this child one right this is one of the requirement where we have to embed this is a second scenario first one is parallel dependencies second one is child dependencies and third one is one to one mapping example is like uh, an, a name called alice has got email phone number loyalty and address can be multiple addresses but you can have only max of two or three right uh, but here if you say that i'll even add his brother's details his mother's details and everything then it is going to blow blow off right because it is going to have a higher retrieval time so we have to take care of the reading and writing of this system 
okay so uh, the third scenario embedded is when we have a little addresses map to it and all our map to your uh, one to one mapping here so all the customers have email loyalty uh, number as one to one relationships these are all by default maps so we will define that here and addresses are little little less but if it is very huge here they don't consider it here again the fourth and fifth point are going with similar rate of updates so does not change like more often like maybe error kind of uh, dimensional data it more doesn't change out more often the so it's better to map it to single place or if the content of this data set is very less maybe kind of this document size is maybe less than 2 mb that's how that's what default they mention it default size is limit as 2 mb so but yeah still in a higher note if if this is increasing out let's say he is adding his brother's details or his wife's details or his daughter's details all in one place then it is not going to help us it is going to have a huge uh, document list right so which will take longer time to read it and even update it also it's not recommended in that case so there are five cases to update it to you a higher level one is data from entity is required together like kind of one to one parallel mapping other one is uh, child data dependencies that we have seen just now and third one is one to one relationship mapping fourth one is similar rate of update like maybe a slow changing dimension to city city data sets or let's say any other uh, maybe dimensional data sets it, it doesn't have much updates or much uh, inputs happening out you can retrieve it in a small data set there that's fine and other one is one to few only few few records are mapped to it the better to map it into one place even if they are independent okay so this is very very important why because when you defining our use our use is more about reading your top queries right like top writes and top inserts and top uh, reads and again top queries which is more which you generally use it like top five queries this all are going to impact you badly when you don't have this properly defined right because this is a one time activity you can't do go forward and do it and change it out always so this is one way of optimizing your our use and your queries right because the, when you optimize this the top queries will be uh, retrieved faster and we don't need to have much of our use there clear everyone in terms of architectural understanding dilip three questions okay okay sure so let's move ahead and i'll kind of touch base it so yeah usually embedding provides better read performances and uh, but yeah but might be impacting the right performances because as everyone everything has to be inserted into one place it might be impacting your uh, right permissions but again the thing is that if there is a continuous data coming in then i would say better to consider even writing performance also according to your embedding performances okay now everyone can think of it right like how does this no schema structure in not automatic indexing working out right this is a very very important thing to consider because we don't know how does it indexing work how does this uh, schema no schema approach works we'll see that going forward from now so example one more thing very important is how do you retrieve this data set let's say if i say select star from c uh, where c dot family id is equal to e so if you, if you see here family id here is new here is new so what does c means the whole document right or auto documents we have it will read from that so when you say c dot family id the louis is considering two things here then i'll give me type as person and cat it will give two records here okay so make sure that you define your wake condition properly there it will reduce your uh, retrieval powers so this is what we're going to see now before going to the point any questions anyone so i hope you are understanding it right everyone okay shashank one question yes uh, regarding uh, embedded uh, when to embed uh, mm -hmm. the uh, document mm -hmm. so it could be uh, use the rule something like when it is a master data we could use embedding but when it is a transaction data on that particular master data we could uh, use references mm -hmm. uh, you are saying about basically, functions right uh, you have to define the insert functions accordingly uh basically uh i'm i'm trying to think of an example wherein uh we we should not use the embedding even if it is a master data because okay. what i'm uh, what i'm able to see is uh, when it is master data usually we would end up uh, embedding the 
Uh, also, also depends. Also, also. Yeah. Right. Okay. See, uh, basically, uh, I got your point. What you are saying now, that can be done through uh, the UD user-defined functions, right? You can define through user-defined functions, or let's say any store procedures. That can be done. But again, that is all uh, business use case basis. The kind of uh, maybe what are the top retrieval queries as I mentioned, right? The most important is we have defined first five queries, which is most commonly used. And uh, other one is yeah. read and write operation. So based upon this point, the first option, then go with the embedding option. So I guess you are getting hierarchy, right? The first one is define your whole data set and understand your business, and then come with your top five queries, which is going to happen. Let's say maybe for next six months, what are top five queries? Maybe after that it can change, or yeah. it's okay. But uh, but uh, top five queries, then 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 go with your uh, master data models, whatever you have it, and then then accordingly you define your uh, kind of embeddings or different different kind of you want to go with differencing model, you can define that. Yeah. Uh, because the right right is going to impact badly when you go with embeds, multiple embeds. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was the point because master data we do not write so frequently, and secondly. Master data is queried like uh, for a drill down or something like that. Then uh, it would be better to have master data. So right. So generally, what we do is okay, yeah, what I said is right. We can create a kind of a, a store box which we can do that. Store box and we can define that, saying that like let's say if this is the case, then do this kind of approach, and then try to expose that into inserting records. Okay. Okay. That, that can be done actually. Yeah. So yeah, and this is very important. I guess uh, everyone who is already working in Cosmos DB they'll understand the importance of RUs and everything. But if everyone is new to it, just assume that this is going to impact your performance drastically. Like in what we are discussing about the points, right? These are very detailed points. Okay. And second point is how does the indexing work, right? Like kind of as I mentioned, you it is automatically indexed, and we don't have any schema for this. How does it map actually, right? So see here, I have this JSON file: locations and country, Germany, city, Berlin. Country France and Paris. Headquarters is Germany. Uh, so, uh, one second, guys. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So uh, the headquarters is Bel Belgium, exports is city, Moscow, and Athens, right? So if you see this, this is again uh, kind of inverted now. It is kind of defining a hierarchy here. The topmost is a hierarchy here, and it's got three uh, three layers, like location, headquarters, and exports. Location, headquarters, exports, right? And we have two indexes inside it. One is zero and one, right? If you see here, we have two two records. Zero is country again, city. We have got uh, Germany and uh, Berlin. The country is Germany. It is Berlin, and other 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 record we have it as France and Paris, and headquarters is only Belgium here, and we have exports as Moscow, city is Moscow, and other one record as city again in Athens, right? This is one 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 document we have it. Let's say we have one more document coming up. Next record is one more document where they try to add one more record into system, right? Because as we are going with the schema-less approach. It becomes it makes your life easier because you don't have to worry about all these things. It is all taken care. Like see here example, I have one more revenue record coming up into locations, and I have my uh, uh, exports as one more record called dealers, and has got a name and hands. So now if we, if you invert this, if you invert it from here to this this process, you find that the location has only one record, which has got uh, three things inside it: country, city, and revenue. Are automatically extending the revenue. See here. We have these two things already, right? Now we got this revenue as a new one, and headquarters is Italy for this, and the exports has got two records again here, and again the first record has got two dimensions again here. I just break it down into multiple chunks, right? This is the way they work. Okay. Now, how about then? I want to insert these two records into one table. Let's assume that we want to because as a common thing is the all three are same here. So I can insert it to same same table, right? Uh, so how do we do it? How do I do these two things? Now this is one here, and this is two here, right? First document, second document. When I say merge it, it becomes like this. Way one comma two is nothing but first index, and second index. Sorry, second first document, second document. So location has got two documents. Headquarter two documents, two documents. Go down. 
we have uh, we have the record for zero location zero we have two documents but in location one we have only one document here because country and city has got only one thing here the same way in the second one we have even have revenue also getting me right we even have revenue also here and the same way we go with belgium italy and exports city dealer city berlin so we have all the things in place right so it is all basically mapping from where is it coming out from the index of 2 or index of 1 so this is the way it creates your schema automatically when a new record comes in it like automatically extend itself clear everyone any questions here hope this is interesting for you now this is what the no sql works with okay so let's go with the most important other important important point is partitioning again as i mentioned you the rds is going to completely impact your performance as well as your uh, costing part so we have to go with multiple things the first thing is we have understood what are top five queries that is a kind of criteria we have to go with and what are number of reads and writes we have it we'll see that the next we go with how do we optimize your embedding or referencing approach so we have seen that also and then we have seen the indexing concept how does it automatically index and how, how does it work with no schema right so we have seen that as well now the fourth part is to go with partition as i mentioned today it will be more more of a uh, kind of theory basis and uh, tomorrow it will be more, more completely hands on in terms of the, again ai modeling and database and everything as this is a kind of everyone is new to this i want to kind of touch base the very deep concepts of it okay so <coughs> sorry partitioning so i guess the same partitioning as our sql db part table partitioning only nothing nothing new in this but this is the impact is very high here okay so what does it mean so yeah i guess everyone knows what is partitioning means and how does it work right uh, who is working on the sql db or let's say any other working on sql beta housing concepts they know about the partitioning concepts so the same thing here also but the impact is very high like what it means is this has got two partitioning so one is logical partitioning physical partitioning logical is nothing but mapping hash hash mapping right you remember that round robin hash mapping and all those things right so the logical partitioning is mapped with hash mapping saying that this particular record is mapped to this id so which physical location is it and physical partitioning is more about partitioning your accessories and compute engines so basically for this partitioning we have defining this much of computing power and this much of storage so the physical partitioning is defined here logical partitioning is more about mapping which record is mapped to which partition physical partition okay so there are two partitions logical partition and physical partition like this let's assume that this is a requirement this is a physical partition we have it here this is a logical partition city id what you given as plot id right the same as city id we have it here so now uh, this can be like this let's say if you get a new record as beijing document as beijing it goes and sits into this particular partition because it is already there here right and this is what allocated physical partitioning here so it becomes very easy to retrieve it same way if you get shanghai it sits on goes and sits down in here like this then you might ask me let's say we have defined n number of partitions but the city count is increasing now and we got a new cities into the system how does it handle it right so for that again this breaks down into multiple chunks small chunks small uh, storage units and small uh, compute nodes like this so let's say if we have this and we are getting more uh, going forward it divides into range 1 and range 2 okay and it starts appending at slowly again inside this like this this all go to partition x1 partition x2 inside this only created we have a static number of uh, kind of storage units uh, physical partitions again divides into multiple small chunks and defines it inside it and someone asked me like kind of will this collection be defined into multiple collections this is when you define distribution sorry when you define your uh, kind of the reus on a kind of in a in a kind of db level that defines like this only it, it basically divides into multiple collections when you define it at the collection level it defines your reus based upon partitions let's assume that 
we have five partitions here partition 1 2 to 5 then uh, each we have when we define as 10000 r use defines each equally here okay this is very very important why is it very important can anyone guess me out why is it very important to understand this concept anyone make it this it's okay if you know it's wrong someone who is already working on this can understand this right okay it's fine so the, 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 it is very important because i'll give a scenario for you let's say i have defined my uh, partition id as let's say maybe car model let's assume that i have defined my car model as uh, I, i'm a kind of i have a kind of car manufacturing company and i want to kind of streamline this into cosmos db so i defined my car model or kind of let's say car name as the partition id right so what happens now it defines into multiple partitions like this so let's say i'll give a scenario let's say the car model is a super hit model or a flop model right so what happens now the super hit model is fitting here so only two zone rus are defined for this the flop model is here it has got enough space here but it is not able to retrieve it because it is not not much people are who are using it so this is getting blowed off right is getting blotted off which means that my people are accessing this but the limit is only to those are use clear everyone i hope everyone is understanding what we are discussing here basically data is queen as you are yes so example is that's what i mentioned it partition is going to hugely impact query performances this is the reason why example is so this is called as hot partitioning and cold partitioning which means that let's say the throughput is 2000 rus for this partition assume that physical physical disk partitioning is 2000 rus now if i have my model or my partition id which is most commonly used is defined inside this it will be most commonly used right it will be hot partition now which means that this is almost about to reach its maximum limit so this cannot be now if you try to read this query right it will take a longer time to read it because it's already blurred out and here if it is see this cold partitioning which is not not quite under utilized this is this can kind of this can be uh, not much used because you are using a lot of unused rus you are paying for you are paying a lot of unused rus which is not properly utilized clear so if you see this is the right partitioning where we have right level of maybe more than half is okay clear evidence this is uh, this is what we have to consider when you going with uh, shashank uh, yes can you please uh, explain the logical partitioning part again okay this one right yes the even before that by definition actually i did not understand where is the differentiation in uh, physical and logical partition okay this one right see logical partition is more about hash mapping right so let's say if i get a record i map to this i have my Uh, example is i uh, have my uh, hash mapping record i get a new record and and this hash mapping will define let's say this is a beijing right beijing is a new new partition id it came out for the record so that yeah. says that yeah this record is mapped to this physical partitioning location all right okay yeah? so yeah. it defines that logical partitioning hash yeah. mapping maybe mapping at one to one pointing okay have a key value pairs and yeah. physical partition nothing but we have dedicated physical partitions for everything and uh, rus are evenly distributed per physical partition right yes okay like this if you see here right example this is the one sorry like the see here it is physically equally distributed so what happens uh, it is going to impact you badly so that is called as hot partitioning and cold partitioning this is all i guess everyone is working on the space then they they, they will help them a lot because it's more about deeper type concepts of all these things where to optimize where not to optimize and all those things okay, okay. so uh, so this is what uh, you have to make sure that your id should be your kind of partitioning id should be optimally defined that's the reason why i mentioned right it's going to drastically impact someone asked me is it performance impacting are you this is what answer for you is it's going to impact you drastically on hard partitioning and cold partitioning and if you are going with this approach right you might think that the, the read part the read is very faster but point is that you are paying unwantedly for this and very costly right this all is unused here 
okay i guess we'll go for the demo of uh, i guess we have tried it but let me just go back and we we'll go with few other demos now uh, but before that i'll just want to complete this also like kind of example for partitioning let's complete this and go back there okay maybe it is around half an hour more for us so we'll complete this scenario it takes around 10 minutes more okay so i'll take a scenario for partitioning now I'll, i i guess you can tell me out what is right for what is not right maybe so i have a requirement of connected cars is a very uh, kind of credit card is a vehicle telemetry telematics company they're planning to store vehicle telemetry data from millions of vehicles every second into cosmos db this is a real time scenario connected cars right so you getting the information about the people getting the information about the statistics the driving patterns their locations getting all this information into the systems so what is the potential partition key choices we have right so they and they consider that these are the few points which you consider one is a vehicle model name current time and which time they are doing it and device id right other one is the kind of composite key maybe kind of combination of device id plus current time so can you tell me what is the best one to choose it from this they consider this are the four points which are very important to consider think of it and let me know let me just go forward and tell you that so most of the car manufacturing companies only have couple of dozen models right there are not many models in the vehicle models like maybe let's say for say maruti suzuki maruti ka maruti or let's say kind of toyota or let's say any other they come they have maybe a static model number of models 10 maximum right so again this this uh, partition is defined by storage distribution as well as throughput right or is it mapped with these two things so let's say if you get a kind of very prime model which is kind of let's say hit model maybe kind of toyota fortuner or let's say kind of um, maruti maruti suzuki any any other model like swift cars so these are all kind of hit models they have a lot of revenue generating they are kind of they are utilized a lot here right depending on the uniform number of sales across the various models this introduces possibility of hot partitioning because there might be a huge hit and there may be a huge flop of it right this is going to huge hugely impact you right next next one is current month let's say we go with current month let's say this this month month wise we want to track this it's better to have it right so then the distribution the storage might be efficient enough but throughput is very high because we maybe have a, let's say kind of we year end sales or let's say some some other kind of year end travels then it is going to impact your throughput not to storage storage is always organized better way okay but throughput retrieval power is very high here so it's going to impact your current month is not going to be right option okay so you can just go go read this auto manufacturers have transactions occurring throughout the year this will create a more balanced distribution of of uh, the storage right this is right in terms of storage however the most business transaction occur on the recent data created uh, the possible possibility of creating the hot partitions because there might be a year end sales or something else so let's go with the device id now if you see this device id each car could have a unique device id this create large number of partition key values and would have a significant amount of granularity so you can go deeper into the kind of every every device level so it's not about model level but we go into device level depending on how many transaction occur per vehicle it is possible to have a specific partition key that is just a storage limit so you don't have any issue with this one not this one right because storage limit is enabled and we have a unique ids for everything and we can easily track them so, the, so it is very easy for us to have a distribution in proper way okay and the last one is composite here so composite will work but thing is the throughput might may not work because you have year end uh sales so you want to have a, maybe a kind of a month end uh, approach or so month starting approach so this is a kind of huge impact on that space so the time is going to impact us right so it's better to go with this is option device id is the right option for this clear everyone this is the way we have to define your uh, model okay so any questions here till this point anyone Uh, is all Prashant, kind of common sense yeah. 
yes yes uh, ashish and the throughput distribution is not clear like how are we calculating that throughput distribution okay see basically throughput is more about reading the data right like kind of how fast you can read the data Yes. So when you are when you are logical partitioning, so when you when you physical partitioning is kind of blotted out, storage storage is fully kind of inserted with the only one model, then the retrieval power is very lo- lost it right? We can't we can't retrieve it faster because we have lot of defined inside the same place. Like the throughput is reduced. See here right? Let me just go back. Okay, this is the one. See that this is a throughput limit right? Everything is balanced. Let's say we have ten partitions, physical partitions, and only one model is more hitting out. So and nothing but one place is one one partition is more hitting out. Out of ten partitions, one partition more hitting out of. So to, to, to retrieve it is already hitting the maximum levels. Throughput is let's say hundred uh, kind of let's say you want to read around you want to read around ten thousand records. Let's assume that. Okay, all ten thousand records are placed in one one this one. So it has got a kind of two thousand RUs. Let's assume that. Which means that a common amount of compute power, common amount of uh, kind of retrieval power, storage location, everything. IOs. So then it will be very fast. It will take a longer time to read this. But when okay. you see here, it is balanced one here. Clear? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is what we have considered here. This is all use cases. I guess you can go through them. Common use cases, the kind of IoT, IoT-based use cases, then sensor data, telemetry data, or it can be a IoT telemetry data, like see here. We can just pass it through IoT hubs or event hubs here from your IoT devices, and from there we have to go with uh, HD inside Strom or something, or even your data bricks in between them. I let's say we don't have data bricks here, but you can use it. so this is the way we can consider it and there are many retail sale and you are if you are working on some retail transaction like black friday or let's say big billion days you can just have this define this like this web app storage here and you can have live processing and kind of such index in here let's go back and try all all those things maybe uh, let's go back to your other one is called as creating store procedures and user functions so i guess we know the importance of store procedures it's more about inserting your records or reading your records whatever it is and and other one is udfs so udfs i guess everyone knows about this it's basically a user defined function which means that uh, like example is uh, I, i want to define my own function and i want to expose it to my uh, next 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 stages so i can use that for the user defined functions so let's go with them a kind of example and all this are defined in the javascripting so all defined in javascripting okay so that's a very default thing you have to consider it so if you see here i'm defining some function called and it responded back with the uh, hello world And I have a user-defined function where we are writing some calculation, like let's say tax calculation, sales cons calculation, and all those things. Let's go and have an exercise on this. So if we can then go back to your portal and create a unit seven of eight. So you'll have the same subscription. Don't worry. Just go there and see here portal. Go to the portal, and you have the two uh, setting accounts. Go here like this. Drop down. You say create new store procedure. close all these things i don't want to have all this here so i'm creating a new store procedure here right so this is a sample one it gave to you the sample feed here nothing much inside this is kind of just hitting the server and getting back okay so sorry let's just uh, say this and you'll get a sample scenario here just say it as sample here just go to your uh, and give the name as sample store proc and say save it okay now you can directly execute this when you say execute you have to ask me for partitioning key value what partition key value you want to pass in just say some value here 
pass it into this and say execute it gives me the record here right basically passing the logic into it and it reads all the values and gives you what is the name you want to retrieve it okay let me make it most more more meaningful here now so i just want to go for creating a new store procedure creating my do, creating my own document which more which means that i want to insert a document into my list right into my collection so i'm getting the context of it nothing but the account details from the account i'm getting the collections okay and i'm creating a variable called doc which will contains my information about the document okay and i'm saying that i accepted nothing but create doc collection dot create document i nothing but item and i'm saying that it is a doc this is what you have to insert it right and if it is a failing out then throw an error for me okay now if it is not failed then return it out which means that if it is not failed out then give me the results out of it okay just copy this go here and just remove this off and just say click on my store procedures items here and see drop down here and say new store procedure and remove this completely and paste a new one there okay and name this as some meaningful name like create my document hope everyone is in sync with me i'll wait for a minute maybe let me know if you have any questions i'll go to my questions window also so the va values are hard coded here right we can parameterize them as well we can parameterize them uh, this is kind of just a sample example right but if you can parameterize them it's not a issue because you, let's say you are using it from databricks something else right you can try to call that a parameters and pass it into that okay so uh, i guess i have passing this parameter this list right you can just pass it through your document list from your databricks or your event hubs or whatever it is it will be inserted into this so i can just say now uh, save this and execute this i'll pass my partition key again the same partition key and say execute so here i'm getting the results right the same way i got in this new record right new record is all new record we have it same way let's go and create our user defined function also okay so this is a user defined function if you see the drop down you find a udf here and you can just i can just copy the same command now see here i'm trying to create some logic transformation logic like saying that if price is equal to undefined then no input volume uh, amount is equal to the price here when price is less than this one then uh, kind of return with the 0.01 value here if it is else is less than uh, less than 10000 do this or else return this one so i can copy this and i can paste it here this is a user defined function which means that we kind of use this as a kind of function inside our system i'll show you how i'll say udf paste this here and i'll say product tax this is the name of this and then say save it now we cannot directly execute this we can use it in a sql query right like how we say a kind of string of this one or let's say type of this one so we can use the same way here let me close this things and i'll go to my items again here I'll write my sql query So now what I am saying, see here, select CID, product ID, price, but see here UDF dot product tax of this price. So I am calling my uh, my product tax as a kind of function which is defined by me on top of this, like this. I can paste this here and say execute a query. It transforms that and gives you the value product tax. See here, right? Got me, everyone. any questions here okay it's fine then so let's move ahead i guess we'll come back again here you can try out all these things is all free of cost you can just go there and try this graph db and nosql db app and everything we'll try to take around 2 minutes to complete this also so 
sandbox. So this is again, you can distribute this data globally, which means that you can go to, you. this is all not required, I guess. So I just, I'll give you a hint of it. I just see here, you can just see there, I want to, de I want to define my global replication of data in this location. My company is located on this, in this locations, and then say, enable that and save it. That's it, done. Getting me right, everyone? Just go to replicate data globally. It will be lost now, but let me just show you that. Find some replicate data. Not this, sorry. So replicate data globally. So you can define, like, let's say this is the data centers I have availability of. So I can go there and define, let's say I'll, I'm in South India. So I'll just click on this. I want to have it here, and I want to have it here also. And I want to have it in my uh, Japan East. You can define everywhere. So now the cost of the storage storage will be kind of four times because I've stored it in four locations, right? So it will be enabled to four times. And see here, I have to enable this. So now reads rights are enabled here. Data is also replicated as well as your region rights are enabled here. And save this, you'll be having everything in one place now. Whenever someone does, does some transactions, automatically enables all these places within less than 10 milliseconds. That's the beauty of this. Okay, so we can use it for fraudulent transaction. Let's say if someone is doing some fraudulent transaction, it will be immediately impacting the pattern. Maybe that account or pattern or will be immediately impacted. Clear everyone? Any questions here? Okay. Is there is there a way to uh, I know it's document DB, but uh, for uh, what is what are the other options for DR uh, configurations? Like, can I have a backup job scheduled which backs it up and put on a blob, something like that? Yeah, so the the, the has to be handled through your partial scripting, right? Not with uh, this, this is not with uh, not with this level. Uh, not with so Cosmos DB, but that, that's, that's possible. Yeah, that's possible. You can add an uh, Azure, Azure function and do it, right? You can as see here, you know, Azure function I add here. Add that up and try to export that into your uh, blob storage. Maybe every 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 weekly once or something, and define trigger there, yeah. define that trigger and push it off. Okay. It's possible in this space. Yeah. Okay, so this is all about Cosmos DB. I hope you understood enough things here. Hope everyone has enjoyed this because this is more more about uh, maybe I'm going to have, I will say you already know about this and we are trying to work on the optimization parameters. That's what the importance of this course is. So, so another yeah. question, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Shashank. In a yeah. typical enterprise development environment, what is the practice? Uh, uh, so when we are through a development phase and then we go through some kind of uh, test, uh, testing, yeah, quality yeah. engineering, and then we go to production. Do, do we really need to create different environments and have the same DB replicate uh, created for dev, SIT, QA, prod, something like that? Yes. So we have something called the ARM templates, nothing but JSON scripts again. So which is all defined for everything, and uh, we'll have a DevOps team who will do that. Like, kind of, will they'll be ex automatically able to define some DevOps process, pipeline process where if you just say trigger it, it will start triggering the whole data set from there, pump it into your DB variables, uh, where we'll have dynamic parameters. Let's say, see, generally what happens is the, the DB name, uh, let's say in the production is underscore uh, prod underscore dev, right? So we'll, we'll define this parameterization uh, for the JSON scripts and push it into the system. That's what we do it. Uh, but the cost will be according to the number of environments we have, right? Yes, yes, obviously. Because generally what we do is we define uh, either subscriptions of dev and prod, so that we don't have any issue with the subscription cost, because costing is defined on, on the subscription basis, right? So it will have different, different subscriptions for it and map accordingly. This is the general practice we do it. But if you want to have under, under the same subscription, you want to have dev and prod environments, then it's a different way of working on it. Like we'll, we'll directly, directly go with uh, creating uh, two resource groups and we'll have a generic resource group which is kind of monitored by admins. We'll have dev account and prod account and prod will be defined to only few users. So this way we'll, do, we'll manage things. We'll not give uh, access to the DBs from the portal itself. Generally what happens is when you give access to the, your, 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 your SQL DB, right? Anyone can open from the portal and see it. So mm -hmm. We don't want to do that. Yeah. So we yeah. create a new resource group 
uh, which is kind of one restricted to only particular audience. We create a SQL DB inside it, and we give the username password to them. So whenever someone opens a user, uh, opens the resource group which is not assigned to them, it will not be allowed to it. They will not be able to see even at all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's the authentication we maintain it actually. Right. Okay. So. I guess you've even understood now the concept of it. Uh, I'll be sharing you the feedback now. It'll take around uh, maybe uh, two minutes for you. I'll just take this opportunity to help us out on this. And uh, the next topic would be on uh, what we're going to do tomorrow, right? Tomorrow is a more than 90%, I would say 100% is hands on. There's nothing left out in the hands on process. We'll see. Yeah, now till now we have seen the big data processing, right? We have seen multiple things inside the big data. But how about machine learning so i guess very few are working on this but trust me on this there's not going to be a high specific or kind of let's say restricted team of machine learning anymore you don't have not have it going for maybe at least one 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 and a half year down the line because things are changing out in the machine learning space where people are thinking that it's a, it's no more a kind of hype or no more it's kind of a complex thing to work it's just an uh, api to work trust me or not this is what is happening out and there's a lot of features again that say we have feature engineering we have data modeling we have hyperparameter tuning there's a lot many things which is kind of very very complex to work but thing is they're all automated now ai is automating ai itself so that's what is we are going with now so when in this space the big data cannot be uh, kind of i would say cannot be touched in this space but the end part like kind of after we get the data into system we want to build machine learning models right so the machine learning team is handled by data scientists. You don't need to worry about it. Kind of what model to use, what thing is your, and it can be automated also. But thing is that when the model is shared to you, it is our, our responsibility as a big data engineer or, data, or DevOps engineer to like, kind of maintain this, uh, which model to be exposed to your product, which, which, uh, which, which, which API to use it off, which model to maintain, how do you maintain the versions. So all this controlled by us. He cannot take care of that. So it's changing out now, which means that even the even the data machine learning is built inside the databricks, right? So you can build your models and retrieve it. Tomorrow's our example is completely in databricks, machine learning, and SQL DB, right? So we'll use Data Factory also there. We'll try to copy the data from one place to other place, then kind of create the models. So what I would suggest is three hours is very very small because it takes around whole day for us generally. Uh, when when we are working in parallel, so I would say listen to me. Kind of we'll try to work together because we'll touch base every topic what we discussed till now. Like kind of from this past five days, what we have seen that right, past five six days, we'll see everything, and we'll try to build the whole entire system. Okay, so one second. Uh, I guess everyone got the feedback link right. This is the link we have it. I've shared it to you in the URL in the, in the chat window. Take around two minutes, I guess that will not take more than two minutes and I'll wait for it and we'll try to complete the, the machine learning understanding after this. Maybe it takes around another 15 minutes for us. Okay, I'll just, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll wait for two minutes. So uh, yeah, I guess I have uh, one feedback for most of the people that I'm going a little faster in terms of uh, kind of speech and in terms of this one. So I guess I'm trying to manage that because I have very less time and I have to manage many things. So I'm trying to manage things, but yeah, let me know. I guess I'll go a little slower. It is I've done. I have tried today to go slower. So we'll wait for another minute and minute and a half. We'll take it up from there.
Okay. Hope everyone's done with this. Submit it. Okay. Thanks, Kumar. So hope everyone is able to submit it. Let me know if any issues there, and uh, let's continue now. So uh, I guess this is more about um, AI team, AI uh, uh, kind of AI workshop. So let me just come back to you on that same space. So I download it somewhere. So I'll just go here and I'll go to my so this uh, okay because I didn't update it yet into the GitHub but I'll update it today. So this is more about AI workspace, AI workshop, which is which is which is have which is happening for uh, other, other companies. CTS is only interested in big data, so we try to map it. But I just want to bring up this point because this is what we're going to see tomorrow. Okay, so let's go and for around take around 10 minutes and then kind of come come back again. Okay. So another last point is yesterday data the, the kind of the very important point in terms of Databricks Delta, right? If you see Kafka and Flink, the throughput is ending up with this, maybe around uh, Strom and Flink will give you around 10, 15 million records per second, but Spark is ending up with 65 million records approximately. That is about, that is 2.2, but now we got, got enough, we got 2.3 also. Uh, so we got even getting, getting 3.0 also as of going forward now. So which is kind of very, very advanced, and this is going to increase the throughput a lot. They're using something called a tungsten catalyst, which is a work, work, work with Microsoft, Facebook, and Spark team. The three are working on Databricks Delta to kind of enhance this performance more further. So this is helping you a lot to work with it. Okay, this is a this is a slide study, so this is sort of add it up. So now, what offer big data? Yeah, now we understood big data, right? Till now we have seen like how do we uh, orchestrate the data, how do we ingest the data, how do we transport this. How do you transform it to the Databricks? And how do we kind of use Cosmos DB? So this is all we have seen it. But the thing is that then what after that? Yeah, we have stored this data. We have organized this data. But what is it next, right? That's more about machine learning services. So I'll take around 10 minutes, not more than that. Maybe I guess I have, I have a little less time. I just want to touch base this machine learning concept. OK, so now every company is going with their own level of machine learning expertise. Like every company they have their they're starting, maybe, maybe they are starting from scratch. They are starting with a mid level, maybe they're already ex extreme levels of already implementing, like Uber companies. Uber or, or companies are already using this, right? So, every, com every, st every company is in their own stage of implementation. That's where the machine learning service came out. I'm not touch basing the AI modeling here, I'm touch basing only machine learning modeling here because we are restricted to the data theme is always mapped to machine learning, not to AI modeling. Most 90% of the time, AI is more about chatbots, computer vision, and all those things. So I'm touch basing more about the machine learning space, okay? And my expertise lies in this space as well as computer vision, but I just want to touch base the space, okay? So the services, whatever we have it, like let's say any services we have it, we are already having it here, plus Python SDK. Why did they go with this approach? SDK is nothing but libraries, right? Nothing but libraries where you can leverage this machine learning models, okay? So why did they go with this models, this approach? Because as I mentioned to you, every company is in their own phase of improvement. So uh, we already have Azure Cloud services, like kind of whatever big data services we have it, plus extending it with SDKs. So what will this do? Uh, can anyone tell me what are phases we have it in machine learning? Anyone has little idea on it, it's okay. Uh, okay, Kisli, I guess I'll stop it in five, 10 minutes maximum. If you're okay, you can just continue, or else you can leave. I, I guess I'll show you the video. Plus. So can anyone touch base? What are the stages we have it in machine learning? Generally, you take the, the, the sample data, you bring the model, mm -hmm. build the model, then you train your, uh, uh, train your, uh, on your model, and then uh, put the new data set to bring in the results. Exactly, right. What is it is right, but uh, this is a high level thing. But when you go to reality, right? When you go to the kind of when you have your hands dirty, then we realize that there are a lot of things involved in it. Like I'll give an example: preparing the more data. Like we have raw data coming out from your system. Let's say like I hope you have seen this data, right? We got it. 
but um, uh, we have to do a lot of feature engineering what a feature engineering means is let's say i have a date right so now what all can i do with this date can anyone tell me what all can i do with this date okay i'll give an example i can i can uh, find out if it's day, day is a weekend or not if it is a holiday or not if it is any kind of any games happening in nearby location or not on that day if there is any kind of uh, <clears throat> kind of i can just say it as a what week is it and what is it midday or midweek or is it kind of uh, what what week in a year what month in a year so you get all these parameters right from this feature from this particular uh, kind of column called date what would it can be I can take multiple features out of it when i get multiple features my granularity of finding a better pattern of this data can increase because weekend uh, weekend is kind of I can have higher sales just saying that date cannot help me out right i can say if it is a, i can say if the date date is a weekend date they can find more responses saying that the sales are very high on this weekend generally on weekends or sales are reduced when on a month end or there is a sale happening out in this location so there is a high sales there so i can find out all this patterns inside my data when we have only date parameter i can do multiple features out of it the same way i can do there will there can be lot of lot more features let's say i have a country list so i can convert the country into multiple features like multiple columns saying that germany as a new column india as a new column i can just define into multiple columns instead of having one column one column with all the countries I can have multiple columns with each country in it right and then say when a new record comes in i'll say that this record is mapped to germany this record is mapped to india and remaining all will be zeros only germany will be one there kind of one hot record we call it as there a lot of features engineering we can do it inside the space so that was all taken care in prepare more preparing data right and then build a model so i can i have to go through the multiple models to come to conclusion saying that okay this model is right to use again inside the model we have hyper tuning parameters which is nothing but let's say we give this parameter uh, let's say the logistic regression with uh, l1 and l2 parameters i'll say l1 is 0 and l1 is 1 so i can i can change all let's say l1 is 0.01 and l1 l2 is 0.02 then the value is different again the output is different again if i use random forest or any other algorithms i have to go with the depth concept when i give the depth as 10 i get a different value so i give the depth as 20 i give a different i get a different value so so that is very very important to kind of uh, build the model with hyper tuning also okay and then train your model again the data, the data what you pass is very very important right when you train your model with uh, multiple more algorithms then you get multiple results so the iteration has to happen multiple times they have to go with multiple iterations there and then okay now i defined my multiple iterations and i found that two models are very good for me yeah so i can expose that i have to maintain this model output somewhere right model nothing but a zip file kind of nothing but uh, where or for kind of we can in higher node we call it as a function where we pass some input to it it gives you output let's say example is i pass an image into my model it gives me output that what is there in the image okay so nothing but a model model nothing but it contains everything about the code so now i can maintain this models in some location maybe i have to have my on premise some some drives where i can say that okay lo, lo, kind of keep this in version 1 version 2 there but very difficult to track it because uh, it's not in the cloud right so and again i cannot understand which model is giving what what what, what or kind of what performances right it is difficult to understand let's say model 1 maybe around 2 months back is giving me 97% but again this is the same model is giving me 92% after 3 months because the data is increasing out and not able to predict in proper way so this all issues are coming out now and this is kind of extending ourselves and the big data engineers responsibility is to understand this and map it and data data scientists work is more about only this three levels like preparing the data building models and training the models but this is all our model, our responsibilities maybe as a devops engineer you have a team for it it's okay but if you don't have a team whether if you're working in a small company uh, kind of like 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 us where we have to manage manage all these things here this i have to manage it this i have to manage it we have to manage multiple models and i have let's say i i kind of i created a new model which is giving me around 97% accuracy let's say then the older model model but when i went to production mode it is giving me maybe around 80% only so i want to again roll back and i want to keep my old model back right this all happens out so then it is very difficult for us to handle this so how do you deploy the models how do you track the models this is very very difficult it is not so easy to work on so 
for that uh, we have azure machine learning service which can do that okay so like this it, it, can, it can you can you can basically kind of compare how many models you have at right? like see this here i have run 10 models inside this out of that i found the better, better model is this one topmost one so inside this there are uh, multiple things like in a higher level we have workspace the reason why I am telling all these things is tomorrow we are going to implement this all these things in the containers and Docker containers. It's not required to learn the machine learning, but we should know how to deploy, how to manage them in the models, right? So we'll see them. We'll we'll use the data, data system plus this machine learning. Okay. So here I'm creating a workspace here, nothing but the highest highest umbrella, like how we have event hub namespace, right? Or we have subscription, right? Instead that we have resource groups. Same way, uh, the workspace is nothing but the highest level. And the experiments we have it, we have pipelines, and we have compute powers. So again, every model will have their own compute powers, right? Let's say I'm working on deep learning models. I need to have different compute nodes. I need to have some GPU-based systems. If I'm working on normal machine learning models with the small data sets, I require lesser compute nodes, right? And I can have multiple models, right? Because I'm working on multiple iterations, like kind of I'm using different different algorithms and different different hyper parameters so I want to maintain these models here and I have different again inside the model I can have different versions. Uh, let's say uh, I can give an example oh you're able to hear me right everyone everyone is able to hear me yeah yeah okay so uh, uh, I guess math is very important no I guess it's not required uh, I kind of yeah, I mean, it is now changing out. I'll tell you that tomorrow. Maybe if you can join the AI workshop, uh, I know it is going to start from very soon. Maybe next week or other week, I guess. I'll tell you that I'll give you a link tomorrow. Maybe if possible, I'll give you the dates also. You can, you can, you can kind of reach out to your uh, uh, team, your, your uh, CTS team, uh, kind of the, the, the four teams you have it. Reach out to them, and they'll they'll basically help you out in giving the links. So it is kind of happening globally. I'll be teaching out. It is for around two days. So then I'll explain you the details about the machine learning and everything. Okay. But as of now, I'll not touch base those things here. So compute nodes, we have uh, we have models, we have versions, we have images. Again, this is all more about Docker's. So how many are uh, how many knows about Docker's here? Docker's and containers. How many worked on it, or how many you know knows it already? Okay. Praveen worked, I know, Kumar, Kumar is very good about it. Okay, there are only few people, I guess, yeah, Chris Lianan is also working on it. So, I guess, in a just higher note, what is doc, Docker image? I, 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 I'll give you in a very base level, very easy understanding. Nothing but a VM, right? But the thing is that VM will contain maybe the OS inside it, or let's say the library is required, which are unwanted for my model. What I require my model is my Python libraries, my dependencies, right? And what is the compute power I have it? And I, accordingly, I'll just create a small image out of it, right? Nothing but like if you remember you, in your olden days, you used to play the video games. We used to have the image files, ISO files. Nothing but it only contains what is required for that. So the same thing is happening out here. We create Docker images, and then we deploy it into multiple options. You can deploy it into web services, edge devices. This is what I'm working on now. I'm working on computer vision with the edge devices, which maybe I guess I can take it up next time. But uh, this is what is an interesting area to work with. Okay, so this is all we will have it now. So tomorrow we'll touch base the workspace creation, we'll touch base the compute nodes, models, images, deployments. We'll see all those things tomorrow. Okay, so this is what here we see the experiments, pipelines, compute nodes, all those things. Okay, so this is all DevOps, we call it as MLOps. And this is coming very close to your big data systems. Now uh, the ML is very closely integrated, getting integrated. So you have to main and manage all those things. Okay. So when it comes to what managing means, this is all handled. We we expose this data to a data scientist, where he does the data preparation and all those things with Databricks or Visual Studio notebooks, and then he trains the model and he gives it back to us. From here our work starts. Operationalizing and deploying these models. He'll not handle it. We have to handle it. Okay. So tomorrow we'll see Databricks see here. Databricks we have it. Data Factory we have it. Databricks we have it. Computing we have it. So this all we'll see tomorrow. I will then expose this whole system. Okay, that's what we'll do it tomorrow. Training it. Okay. Clear everyone.
is there something called uh, is there something called uh, visual studio notebook or you yes. said you, uh, yes so so basically we have something called as uh, like how we have notepad plus plus right uh huh in the same way we have visual studio code i'll show you that code yeah code i know Okay. Yeah. So in the code, we have an option to uh, open up and work on the address files. We can directly create the notebooks integration on top of it. Okay. Let me show you that. Show you that. Yes, I'm not able to open it. Yeah, it's opening up. Yesterday night I was trying some model there. Show you that. See, this is what it is all Markdown language, right? This is all Markdown. See, automatically changed out it is. I can start executing the code from here itself. So you can It'll put visualization you. also in between. No, no, this is not possible. This is more about notebook, and uh, we can deploy the models also. If you see here, uh, it's not enabled here, but uh, I can deploy the models also inside it. Okay. It'll show you the options option option and everything. Yeah. I didn't sign it up yet. Okay. okay. So this is one very important thing to work. So I will not touch base all this thing, but this is this is not part of this. This is more into AI space. So we'll touch base more about the concept of all these things and implement it tomorrow. Okay, so tomorrow it might take around 10-15 minutes more time. Maybe please plan to have that uh, cap for yourself. Maybe you can just inform your approvals or whatever it is. It takes around 12:30 maybe approximately. That's what I'm assuming it. Okay. Sure. Sure. So that's what for today. Uh, I guess uh, today it's more about theory, but yeah, I, was, I hope you enjoyed this theory also because Cosmos DB is more about uh, fine-tuning the models and having the RUs and everything, right? So that's we are that's what we are concentrated to, uh, today, and more about the machine learning workspace also. So we'll see tomorrow on the machine learning workspace and uh, Databricks and everything tomorrow. Okay. Then any questions here? I'll stay back for around five minutes. Let me know, or else you can leave for the day if you have completed the WASP platform. Thanks, Shashank. Thank you, Kumar. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, okay, I know, but we didn't have we didn't have much experience. But that's okay, I guess. Muthu will Muthu will try to do it tomorrow, or tomorrow will try to do it. No issues at all. And what is VS Code? VS Code is nothing but a notebook kind of approach, notebook, notepad, this approach, where you can execute the code also there. It's more more inter more inclined towards your uh, yes, uh, Swati. I'll I'll upload this uh, PPT into day six, uh, to the now itself maybe in five minutes, and you'll be able to see it in another ten fifteen minutes. But you can't see it in your Fresco because Fresco I just updated yesterday night. Maybe I can ask Kumar to do it tomorrow. Thank you all. No questions. I can leave for today. Thanks, Shishan. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone. See you tomorrow. Sure.